It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. And this week's episode of The Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites to the online stores, the marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. I'm sad, bro. Tell me why you sad, Hezzy. Because y'all got Taylor pretending to have COVID so she don't come into the podcast, man. She got COVID? Taylor's here. Taylor's here, but she's she's producing. She's producing. That's right. She better be she's producing. She's here. Like, she's literally here. Like, as we're talking, she's, she yeah. she's listening to us talking. She, what you say? <laughs> she got to produce some antibodies to handle that fucking Delta. <laughs> no, nah, she, she had two tests already, but she's negative. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dope. Co- contrary, Wax is here. Bless wax. You. Contrary to popular belief, COVID's still out here in these streets, it's bro. It's out here in these streets, man. But I you thought know it was hard. over. You said I, what? I thought it was over. Nah, 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 nah. It's hard to act like it. It's over for me. I'm vaxxed. <laughs> if you're Come not vaxxed, you got to worry about it. I see nah. you guys walking with your little mask No, and shit. even if I'm you're still, still vaxxed. It. Nah, I don't use a mask. Let me tell you something. I was in South Carolina all last week for vacation. Okay. And I went to the, uh, I was at the Tanger Outlets. You went outlet shopping? Well, I didn't go. My my my, yeah. my 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 good sister Angela Rye was down and she took my, my daughter and my niece. Ah. And so I was just, you know, I'm paranoid. So I was like, you know. Let me be here with the weapons, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm following them around and shit like that. And I'm sitting down, and this white dude sits by me, old white dude, and he goes, he's South Carolina. So he's like, you still wearing a mask, huh? I'm like, oh, God, yeah. where is this going? <laughs> you know Have saying? you been back? I'm like, where is this going? You know what I mean? He's like, you still wearing a mask, huh? I say, yeah, yeah, still wearing a mask. Um, he, he goes, uh, yeah, you vaxxed? I go, nah, nah. I'm not vaxxed. He goes, how old are you? I said, 43. He goes, yeah, if I was your age, I wouldn't have got vaxxed. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, you vaxxed? He said, yeah, yeah, I got both of them. I said, what you got? He said, the Moderna. I said, why you, why you, why you saying you wouldn't get vaxxed? He was like, I don't know what's in this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, we don't know what's in this shit. Yeah. He was like, fucking December. I could be dead because of this yeah, shit. That's a lot true. Of people I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, that's true. A lot true. of people He's I right. know is, is pissed off that they got it. It's fucked up. Nobody's pissed off. We're heroes. Y'all are pussies. <laughs> Y'all are scared. Like, we had to open up the country so the heroes went out. We put our life on the line and risk so you guys can go to work. You're welcome. Okay, hey, man. We are soldiers, bro. Yeah. Like, honestly, I think non vax people need to say thank you to people like us. I, really I appreciate you. No, I did. No, I did. No, I did. I'm not lying. I do. When I saw that it took so 70% of the country to get vaccinated, Salute to the 70 I appreciate That's y'all. what we do. Y'all got bigger balls. That's hey, right. Listen. 85 South Show got 85 percenters. The 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 NOI got five percenters. <laughs> I salute to all the seventy percenters of the United States of America. Thank you for getting back. Yeah, I appreciate back. y'all, man. Okay, You're welcome, so, bro. So the rest of us don't have to. We gotta look yes. out for the little homies. By the way, I've never Thank been you. vaccinated for nothing in my life. Me neither. That's I mean, why. That's when you a, a baby. A, you can't even go to public when school. You, a baby. you don't have vaccination. Yeah. They vaccinate the hell out of you. If you don't remember, did it happen? Yes. <laughs> 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 no, man. It's true. We can all drop dead, but we did it for y'all. I appreciate you. We got it. In all seriousness, we got to open up a Thank country, you. man. The country but what about lab rats? Y'all forgot about lab rats and what shit about like them? that? You should, why don't you let them get it first? They, they did. The bro. You don't think they tried it on that? Why do you think all lab rats nah. are white, bro? You're right. Because we're the guinea pigs. <laughs> anyway, point is, yeah, go get vax if you want. And if you don't, don't get vax. I don't even know why it's that difficult. If you scared, it shouldn't be don't that, get vaxxed. But here's the thing. No, but what? if you die of COVID after not getting vaxxed, I don't want to hear you crying about it. That's, but if you die from COVID... <laughs> I don't want to hear you crying about it if, if you, you die, die from COVID. The, if you die from the shot. Yeah, yeah. like, I told you don't cry about it. You point a breath. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yo, you, you bring up a good point, though. It should all it should be about choice. It's yeah. a, You're allowed to choose, That's bro. That's it, it's man. Allowed, you're allowed to choose. But you're not allowed to bitch and cry. So birth control. This is birth control. Yeah. What do you mean? Because you know how if girls have birth control and you're not on them, it's okay, but if they don't, like, and they still let you have sex, it's like, then That's they not cry. the point of birth control. Yes, it is. Birth control is to prevent pregnancy, but you're still not supposed to have unprotected. You, yeah, you prevent, and we're not supposed to have unprotected face masks. You know what I'm saying? We out here bare face and shit, and we ain't, we ain't got the fucking vaccine. You following this? I'm just... Taylor, we yeah. miss you, yo. No, <laughs> really. no, no, no. Taylor, we really. How would really, you understand what I'm listen, saying? The okay, vaccine, the vaccine yeah. is the is the birth control. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, mask yeah, yeah, is the yeah, condom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you if so if you don't take the um, oh, birth I hear no. Nah, he's actually making sense. Yeah, no the mask shit. The condom vaccine is a birth control. So you can either take the birth control or wear the mask. Absolutely. Mask and the condom. Exactly. But don't bitch about both. And and if the, you get pregnant, that's on you. But the reason that's not good, not taking the birth control. But uh, it don't make no sense because even if the girl is on birth control, if you still have unprotected sex with it, what about STDs? What about them? <laughs> uh, they got other things like AIDS. They got other things like uh, that's the why I flu said, What about STDs? Yeah, what? but if you're what faithful you and your girl's faithful, you'll be good. Yeah, if your girl, wax, well, you've been putting some work in with those. Oh two. yeah, God I was, I was on the farm this week. Them shit need a vaccine. That was about to Them shit need a vaccine. Them shit might have took the vaccine. It is caught, it's caught, it's caught. <laughs> Yo, your tips are crazy, bro. Why do you bro? do that to your tips? I don't know. I, don't I, know. I, I, I go out there to the farm and I just be out there working and stuff. And then by the time I get, you don't have like a non-work tim. No, I no, I fuck him up every single time. I mean, they look crazy, and bro. And he just got those. I just got you got these. those like two weeks ago. I know. I don't know, bro. You, no, you this, is, this is literally this weekend nah, on the farm. Dude. You just trying to keep calling busy, bro. <laughs> 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 that's what I feel like. You don't keep sending it to the store for the same. Well, he's trying to stay out the house. That's sometimes we do do that, right? Like, sometimes you realize you got to fix like, baby, something out the house. Baby, at me with these shit. Yeah, come on. <laughs> keep her confidence high. I was hey, doing the lawn, go, baby. Yeah. This shit is really stupid, man. Um. I want to. Can we talk about entitlement a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about entitlement, man. Just a little bit, right? Yeah. I, I really just want to tell this generation of of of, of young people, not even just young people, because it's a, a, it's some adults, middle aged people that are the same way. Mm-hmm. Bro, nobody owes you anything. Mm-hmm. You don't. Des- you're, you're not. Des- you're not. You're not. I can't even say you're deserving of anything. I don't think any of us are deserving of anything. You get what you work for, but I think that this generation has a problem with said work. I don't know if they know what work actually looks like. And why is that? Why is it this generation specifically? Or do we think every generation after us is lazier? Like, you know, our parents are like, Mm -hmm. you know, like we take the bus to school and our parents are like, I used to crawl to school. I think think it's a cell phone and microwave that fucked them up. What do you Everything mean? is so fast for them, so they expect and they don't want to work for. Uh, have to work for food. Everything in like life that. is so convenient for them. Mm-hmm. I and think. Um. I think a so lot why of why not this job? Why not this fucking? Me yeah, get but just because something's convenient for you doesn't mean that you deserve it. You know. Mm, that's why I, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm deserving of anything. Yo, do you think it's social media where like you? It seems like you see an inflated amount of people like you succeeding. So you're like, well, I should be doing that. Whereas our generation, we only grew up with our friends around us. So as long as our mm. friends weren't, Jeez. whoa, that's what crazy. That? I don't know. Mm. What happened? That wasn't an earthquake, this was it? It's New York. I have no clue what that was. I don't know now. either. I thought it was him. It felt like it was in the next room, though. I know. I sensed that about a minute ago. I think that's my vaccine. I got like spider senses. Or maybe goddamn shit. somebody turned juvenile back that ass up and Mark is in there like Vax- backing <laughs> that <laughs> shit up. Yo, Mark, <laughs> yo, the vac. Well, Mark Yo, is shaking his ass. This crazy. Someone's on the roof. Somebody twerking. That's the roof? Yeah. I think it's on the roof. No, nah, I think that's Mark twerking. Bro. Cut that shit out. But um, but what were you saying? You was talking about uh, social media uh, making people feel... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you see so many people that are supposed to be just like you, but they're in these higher positions. Yes. They're succeeding. They're doing all this crazy shit. Ten toes, right? ten fingers. Exactly, right? But they're supposed to be just like you. When it was our generation, it was you and your friends. And you guys mm-hmm. were on the same level. When y'all went to college, everybody went to college. If mm-hmm. you were in high school, if you failed a test, they failed a test, mm-hmm. everybody's good. If they didn't fail a test and you did, you felt like an asshole. So yeah. maybe this generation just sees an inflated amount of success. And they're like, well, I should have that too. I, yeah. I, 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 see different. That. I agree with that. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic point. And mm-hmm. I'll expound on that with social media and says social media gives you an audience. Uh. So when you talk about how all we had was our friends, very true. Now these guys got a thousand followers. 10,000 followers. Yo, so Yo, what's the furniture moving going on, on, bro? On. It's f- some furniture moving going on. Yeah. What the hell's happening out here? It sounds like somebody getting caught by their girl and they running. He's trying to hide. It sounds like somebody fighting. Yeah, he getting chased by his girl. Am I tripping? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like somebody was doing some real furniture moving, bro. And somebody was losing. When you hear when you do <laughs> when you <laughs> oh. when you start hearing that much furniture That's moving, somebody getting their ass kicked. And try, they trying to get out the way. Yeah. Some young man running from his wife. What was that? I think there's some people speaking up. Oh. Mm. Okay. All right. 
Well, but no, to, to, to what we were saying Even is they're not supposed to shoot on the roof, but they feel entitled that they could do absolutely anything. Millennials, probably some, millennials. Probably some fucking millennials some up there with no fucking uh, permit or mm-hmm. nothing like that. Absolutely nothing. But no, it's like yeah, people have an audience. It, cause right? it mayhem. We would never do such a thing. <laughs> so we would if, never shoot anything on the roof <laughs> over here. <laughs> <so stupid. laughs> we got certifications. We got insurance. We got That's everything right. we need. We pay for our permits. Exactly. Listen, if you got double digit followers on social media, if you got a hundred people, like I be, I, I was fucking with Nyla yesterday. Today, mm. Nyla, De- Nyla's definitely not one of these entitled millennials. Nyla's no, great. She definitely but she works. was talking to 36 people. Mm-hmm. Her and Wax. Yeah. Talking to 36 people on Instagram. On Instagram Live. That's the craziest shit. But they were it giving it up. <laughs> they had gospel music playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, man, ain't nobody at this church. And listen, <laughs> like, I, I was I was trying to get her to do a gospel mix because you know, every time you turn my it was a top 10, top 10. It was like, damn, just hip hip hop. I don't just listen to hip hop. Yeah. Listen to gospel, so I want mine. Yeah, but y'all weren't talking to nobody, is my point. I get it. it was Yo, how many people? Let's say a let's church honest, is a like, church. How many man. people is Instagram Live ridiculous at? I've seen some stupid numbers. Six doing verses. Come like on. if no it's, verses, I've seen some ver- verses. Nah, stupid. but we ain't talking about verses. It's a regular if somebody get up there I'm on live. About regular Instagram. At what point you got to shut down the Instagram Live? Bro, if you, you have less than ten people, you got to shut that. Word up. Oh, you mean stuff up. like that? I just group chat. <laughs> I've seen people on IG live talking to one person. Nah, I'm like, call that motherfucker. Call. Call. Literally, that's FaceTime. That's FaceTime. Huh? That's FaceTime. And, yeah. if, and by the way, you can bring more people on FaceTime nowadays. Hundred percent. Which yeah. I didn't know. I just found that out the other day. I Under ten, that. you look crazy. You look stupid as hell. Yeah. Under ten, you Six, look crazy. But guess what? Wow. Sometimes all it takes is ten. Because mm. think about it. Think about when we was in high school. It's only one. All you need is one person to gas you up. That's it. That's it. I had go ask her. Go ask her out. Listen, that's it. I had all. All I need yeah. is one person to go along with whatever dumb shit I was doing. <laughs> anything. Let's start the store. Anything. <laughs> and it ain't no stopping me Damn. now. Ain't no stopping us now. Like, all I need face. is one Fuck. person to gas me up. Yeah, hit him with that lock. Yo, maybe mm-hmm. that's why people do such stupid shit. This is just way more people gassing them up. That's, that's, that's it. all Ooh. it is. They got hype, man. They got crazy. That's all hype, it is. Man. That's why you see these people online and literally all it takes is a few people to gas you up yeah. and make you think you are... Something that you're not. Mm. It's just really that simple. It's like really making people yeah. think that there's something. It only that take not- one girl to make you think that you got a little meat, though. All the girls, but oh, you got a big meat. If one girl say you got a little that's meat, you fucked true. up. That's yeah, the true. negative shit sticks to us for long. Oh, that's, that's way a, longer. That's a yeah. fact. That's a fact. But that's why t- the funny part about anybody who, um, you know, initially might get a lot of love, yeah. you ever be looking at them and you be like, oh, bless their little heart. <laughs> they don't even know how this shit gonna turn on them. <laughs> That's how social media does. They they'll love you in the beginning. Oh <laughs> like, man, that's Ouch. some real southern Ouch. shit that he just. That's did right. right. Nah, nah. That fake kindness. Bless his little heart. Bless it. Ow. Bless your you little, little heart. What the fuck do you mean? No, nah, we don't Bless do that. My little heart. No, no. <laughs> but if, when northerners go down to the south, we think that y'all are being nice when you say shit like that. Oh, oh no. bless his heart. Because the mother. That's the worst thing you can say to. Oh. So you just said fuck you. God bless you. Yeah. I really cursed you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, God bless you. God bless. You don't see that with up and coming comedians, though. You don't I'm have a like, for you. you don't oh, see like, like a new comedian, and you you see that they got that new car smell, and yeah. they all happy. They ha- and you just like you have no idea. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> Rude awakening. But this, only if there's arrogance tied to it. This. Causes the arrogance. Yeah. yeah. This shit right here will make you think you're better than what you already are. You ain't ready yet. You know why you don't yeah. see it with comedians a lot of times? Because the stage is humbling. Mm. Like you, you gonna bomb. You can't avoid a bomb. Bombing happens. Yeah. So the stage, okay. yes, the stage is humbling. But 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 before that humbling, they on this shit making motherfuckers die. Like that, mm-hmm. but that's but that's why that shit right there gives the inflated sense of ego. Yes. Like, if you're on stage, you're bombing. They'll stay there, though. They, they, won't, they won't go on that's stage. That's why it's easy to go that way. Yeah. yeah it's easy yeah, to stay yeah, on there. It's yeah. easy to do things on there. Right. And everybody Respect. fucking loves you. And in the negative comments, you just delete them shit. That's right. You mm-hmm. can't delete that's a boo. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. You got to deal with that you, you shit in real time. You can filter that shit out. Imagine right. you can't filter that. That's right. but you can't on stage. That's right. So you're really in prison on stage. That's right. And I mean, I hate to sound like the old guy, but I am. You know, I come from an era where you really had to earn that attention. Literally. You had to earn those motherfucking... You had to fuck the likes. You had to earn people liking you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you beat up the bully, whatever you did. You had to learn it. Come from on. Somewhere. Yeah. And, and that's why I disconnect from this shit so much because I don't ever want this thing right here, that smartphone, that social media to influence my thoughts and my words because it will. Mm. There, there's will. nobody that's exempt from it. If you spend too much time on it, it's going to Definitely. impact you or affect you in some way, shape, or form. You know what's crazy about it is that not only the people, but like, 
the the algorithm and the rules of social media. Like if all the content's going on social media, right? And then social media decides we don't like curse words in our content. Mm-hmm. That shifts how comedy That's right. exists. That's right. Yeah. Right? That's that right. shifts how music exists. Like right. you start writing the lyrics to your songs differently because you know the only way that shit is going to splash. That's right. Is if it so those people, these nerds that are at these social media companies, mm-hmm. they could dictate culture. That's right. They could dictate Damn. music. That's right. They say no twerking. So I was just about what to say dance. If, if, if certain dances are too <laughs> sexual, they go go no. And then all of a sudden choreographers are like, Well, I want to be famous. I'm not gonna start twerking. There that's you right. go. Wow. That guy's, what, it, that's a lot of power. Isn't that isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah. So much power. I, I want y'all to add the audio with T Pain, because T Pain was talking about how wow. we already got a little baby. We already got a baby. We already got, I forgot who else he named, but he was like, we need y'all to be original. Mm. To your point, it's hard to be original when you see something working. Mm. When you see something working for somebody, you're like, oh shit, well, let me make some music like that. I'm a baby too. I'm a baby too. I'm a rap like that. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what all of this shit is. We're all walking around being human algorithms and don't even fucking know. It's so true because we're just drawing a success and whatever's going to work, motherfuckers copy. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is the people that, that usually pop off Especially out of nowhere, or doing something unique. That's right. But it's, exactly. it's scary Everybody doing to do this, that they shit. go that way. I mean, but yo, yeah, they scare. That's- it is for people like I don't know. I'll be. I like going in that lane. It actually kind of grosses me out to like copy certain people and I do their it. things because why? Yeah, why do it? But I understand the person that isn't willing to do that because they might have bills to pay. They got kids to feed. They got. How do I continue to feed the fucking kids and do that shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Res- that's why I don't respect everybody's opinion. And the main reason I don't respect because <laughs> you're just going along with what everybody else. That, exactly <laughs> because <laughs> because because I come from an era where you, you you said things and you didn't care whether somebody agreed or disagreed or not, and you had to stand on whatever that thing was. Mm. Nowadays, people take the safe route. They look at whatever whatever everybody's talking about. They Easy look at blueprint. what the popular opinion is, mm-hmm. and they just go with that. Yeah, as opposed to crafting their own thoughts and. Their own ideas about a situation. Mm-hmm. That's what I respect. I, Thinking outside the box. That's right. There's easy money. There's short. There's there's quick money. It's easy money, but it's short money mm-hmm. if you just go along with the narrative. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you can sniff when somebody's being authentic. Or not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 interesting. Even when like you know I'm, I'm, I see things on social media and they'll be like, oh Charlemagne is PC to God, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm cool with that. Okay. Because What's that's that? me. What's that's that? who I am at this point. What's PC? <laughs> Man, shut up, bro. <laughs> See? You can't even say it. You can't What's even PC? say it without laughing. What's PC? Huh? I don't know. What, is, what does PC mean? PC. You never smoke PC? <laughs> <laughs> oh, politically correct. Politically oh. correct, yeah. I don't know what that means, me right? Either. But I know I'm being true to myself. <laughs> yeah. this, this, son, this, I didn't this, say nothing. This, 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 Listen, this, 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 hey, this, bro, this, 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 this the devil on the show that's like, no, you're not. That's <laughs> facts. This is you that's here. Fact. That's okay. Fact. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? I'm trying to drag you back to this political <laughs> incorrectness once a week on this goddamn podcast. Okay, I can't wait to ask you about Black Widow so you can fake tell me. It. All right, I really haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. It's I'm not, behind. I'm behind on Loki. I'm on, I think, the final episode of Loki. I tried to tonight. get into Loki, man. I, I, I tried. Nah, I the fu- I like the first three episodes, amazing. I fuck with Loki. You like the first yeah. episode? I thought it was regs. The super regs. Nah, I, I, well, I can tell you the reasons I like it. The reasons I like it is because they really introduced Marvel Phase 4 in a real way. Like, we know where the world is going. And now they're about to get into the cosmos and time travel and everything else and Kang mm. the Conqueror. Like, I like that shit. Right. So, I fuck with it. I ain't getting never got I'm into I'm with, I tried. I really wanted it. Like, I wanted a new show. I put that shit on. I was yeah, like, I don't know. Try Naked and Afraid is dope. Naked and Afraid is dope. I it's really that dope. Oh, <laughs> Loki does make me think about, like, what if there, what if there are variants of us? <laughs> Say what? What if there are variants of us? I, yeah, that could happen. Okay, I'll give Marvel credit in this. Is They are going after a super abstract idea, which is time travel, right? Especially in the way they're trying to tell it. Like, that mm-hmm. shit is tricky, difficult, and confusing. They, but they, listen, <laughs> I say this all the time. I don't know who the fuck at Marvel is putting this shit together, but they laid out a 15, 20 year plan that they are executing to perfection. Yeah. They don't waste nothing. Except for Black Widow. I haven't seen Black Widow yet. So you think it's like two of us? It's two of everybody? It's really that bad. You're the second person to tell me that. It's really, it's like a, it's like a Men in Black, not Men in Black, uh, what's it? Mission Impossible movie? Like it's just all action. But she's a spy. Yeah, but it's just all action. Like there's no storyline, there's no funnies, there's no like 
Well, she's a spy, though. Yeah, but you know how their movies are so great because it's action and there's, there's usually like a great story. Like there's plot just... development. Like you understand this character. Why He's talking about doing Marvel. The thing like Marvel has great villains, yeah. great storylines. There's no storyline. Th- like it is a storyline, but I'm just saying, like, there's no character development. You don't understand <laughs> why the character is doing what they're doing. Or just say you hate women. Alex. See, nah, that's the thing. I, no, that's I like, the no, thing right here. I liked Wonder Woman. You ain't like that shit. I hated Wonder Woman. The first no. one was I. Right. The second one was garbage. Both of them was garbage. Nah. No, wait a minute. What? I, I thought both Wonder Women were garbage. <laughs> Not you, no. <laughs> somebody, somebody will edit on Reddit. Charlamagne said he thinks women are garbage. <laughs> I told y'all he was gay. He just said women are garbage. He's gay and misogynist. <laughs> I never liked Wonder Woman. No. Um, I gotta watch like it. I gotta catch Woman, up. Bro? Nah, I gotta well, catch what up. What is it about like a female empowerment character that you hate so much? I love Captain Marvel. Oh, I was confusing him. Captain Marvel is different than Wonder Woman. Captain yes. Marvel is from Marvel, obviously. All Wonder women Woman don't look alike. Andrew. They don't, though? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm parts. saying? They don't, though? Like, come <laughs> on, bro. What do you mean? I gotta watch Super Black Hero Widow, Woman? man. You know what I think might be fuck up Black Widow, too? What's that? The fact that it's out of place. Because Black Widow was supposed to be the first movie after Endgame. Uh, and then they were supposed to roll into the TV show. They actually edited... A lot of Captain America Winter Soldier, because Captain America Winter Soldier, like Black Widow's sister was in that. Yeah. And they edited that. So a lot of that was supposed to have some synergy. So they just threw it. that shit out, essentially. They're like, let's just get this out the way. We and already And that's made how it. they fucked up, because by throwing that out of the original movies, now all of a sudden this bitch got a family and you don't even know that she had well, a family. She to be the B word. Sorry, my bad. Jesus. <laughs> she's a character. She might be a bitch. Like, if you're one of the people my she gosh. killed, you probably think she's a bitch. This is what we're talking about. This is why we can't have an objective conversation <laughs> no. about Black Widow. PC we would, everybody know, right? was doing like, fine. PC the God. I bet if it was White Widow, she could be a bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I bet if it was if it was White Widow, this Karen ass spy out here. You know what I mean? I bet that she could be a bitch. Then did you see that woman in Short Hills Mall, bro? No, what happened? Man, I know oh, you saw that. the person and start crying? Man, Amazing. that shit was incredible. Like, y'all just learning about white women, bro? No, but no. we y'all just figuring we white knew women this out? shit existed no. forever. Very Re- scary. You remember when LeVar Ball was on Colin Coward's show, I think it the was? Herd? The Herd? The Herd, And yeah. remember the woman was behind him and he was like, I'm not even looking behind me. Yeah, I don't want no problem. I don't want no problems with this. I don't, no I don't see and you. Every, and, and, and we were sitting back like, I know exactly what he means. I'm scared. Yeah. This, remember we said that? Yeah. We were like, yo, I'm yes. terrified. As, as a black man, I'm terrified when a white woman starts acting like that. When she, what? she was like, are you threatening me? <laughs> and and, and, and LeVar said, see, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So when you see the woman in Short Hills Mall, I can't remember her name. When you see her Karen. acting like that, that's what we're terrified of. Yes. I'm that, more scared, I'm more scared of that. Too, like, it's, you don't get this alone. Really? Yeah. We're also terrified. Stop tell me, it. Tell me your yeah. trauma. I didn't no know way. Come really on, did it. Stop dude. it. hundred percent. Yeah, we don't play games with that shit. Come on. White women are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't notice? Like, Listen, this I, is I, not I, like, I'd rather be like around a, black, a bunch of black dudes it's with in guns. General. Say what? I'd rather be around a bunch of black dudes with guns is one of those. Well, I'd rather be around a bunch of black dudes with guns than white than one white woman. One white Karen to act like that, for sure. No, nah, She's way more no, dangerous. No, I'm going to sit here and say those are equal opportunity dangerous. No, because I've been around it and, and, and I felt no way. I'd rather be around the Karen because I understand how to navigate the Karen. You'd rather be around those black dudes because you understand how to navigate I, I, I have no problem. I've been around it all week and have no problems at all. Yeah. And I didn't feel a way. Her, if she even came through and walked past, yeah. everybody would have looked with guns on them yeah, and yeah. said nobody looked like Somebody that. said to me that yesterday, what would I have done in that situation? And I thought about it, I'm like, if the girl, if she falls and she's acting like that, because my mind is, I'm gonna run away. Yeah. But if I'm the black guy the, running away from that get situation, shot. I'm getting hurt, right? Yeah. And she can say anything. So I said, you know what I would do? You gotta tape it, bro. I'm gonna jump down a break dance with her. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm gonna get on the floor. I'm gonna start spinning. No, but they gonna think you trying to fight her. her. No, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do my social distancing. Yeah. But I'm going to start break dancing too. You got to, dude. She, no. she start doing her leg like this. I'm going to start doing that shit too. Right? That might be aggressive for them though. That shit got to no. look like the Euro Cup. Bro, that yeah. shit is insane. <laughs> no, you got to do what she did. She got, you got to take for real. Bro, that decide. shit is insane to, to me. Yeah, dude. But, this is what it is. They could cry on spot. Oh, it's, but you, gotta, unbelievable you can't do that ability. though. That's dangerous. It, it is. Dangerous. You take somebody's whole life like that. What? Crying on spot. Doing that bullshit right there. I know, dude. Here, here's the thing that I want to ask that young woman. Yeah. Why? Why? Because she can? Because like, why? When, when, when white chicks fuck up, 
<laughs> they realize they fuck up, and then they realize if they play victim, then nobody talks about what they did. Not at all. So it's a convenient manipulation mm-hmm. strategy. Is you do something wrong, and then it's mm-hmm. but I got anxiety. I feel like this, and why have you done that? And mm-hmm. da, 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 and how can I'm getting anxiety? Even... Not right now. I got anxiety. But it's, so now all of a sudden you're the victim. Yeah. And fucking Charlemagne done told everybody they got anxiety. So now we oh, got to deal with that from everybody. I, I start using it when I'm about to get pulled over. <laughs> Yo, sir, I got anxiety right now. That is though. I, I, what? Wait, that's what I'm it, used to this that shit. That feeling now. he got, that's trauma, bro. It is. When the police pull you over, I just feel like he's a you criminal. <laughs> They're supposed to. They're supposed to pull him still over. Tra- it's still trauma, not not if the it, police are feeling trauma, it, but it's still leave trauma. me alone. Nah. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's still trauma. You got trauma from all the times you've been pulled over. Yes. Plus, just generational trauma of that shit just going through our bodies and our veins from. I was so I was literally I, I bought a book last week called Slave Patrol that talks about the history Jesus. of slave patrols in the Carolinas and how it correlates with the police now. Mm. But you know, you so know all what's that crazy? Shit is generational trauma, bro. You know what's how crazy? they hire people for that? Yo, every time I drive for slave I, patrol, they you just, hate niggers. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Chill out, dude. That's the interview process. Easy, I'm just easy. saying, like. You're not hired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You didn't answer with a hesitation. Stern. Yeah. Just the I hesitation. Should, I should feel uncomfortable. Nah, but listen, every time, uh, I, every time I drive, though, no, I'm and just I see him. in general, I, with, the, with the slave patrol, like, how did they hire the white guys to do that? I haven't no, I, I didn't have. Was there probably, like a, probably a group that, that, that lived together and they probably raised them to I be like that. Reading the book yet. Say again? I haven't started reading it. You didn't start reading it? I just it? read the title. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you're in the woods, right? So it's yeah. not like you can, like, take a car or anything like that. Like, uh-huh. you got to chase these guys. Yes. You know? So, like, what? who's going to f- catch the, the black guy? Well, that's what it's for. It literally was for slaves who would run off the plantation. Yeah, but they, how did you guys ever get caught? This is the my toe. Slave patrols, right. law and violence in Virginia and the Carolinas by Sally E. Haddon. So when, when, you, when you drive and you see them, do you, don't you already have something in your head what you wonder about to say if they pull you over? No. That's kind of fucked up. I, I, I've talked about this a million times. I pull over to the side of the road and let them pass me. Always. I don't, I don't, if do, I see I don't you want behind the interaction. Me, mm-hmm. Uh, please let a gas station be somewhere, a store, a complex. I don't want the interaction. Please. I don't want the interaction. What do you do? Who? Get the, you just get, pull whatever off. it pull is. The side of the road. I don't, I don't care if it's Victoria's Secret. I'm pulling over in there. That's uh, exactly where Abigail was and, at. I think that's her you name. Do that, and you do that because you've had these horrible racial experiences. You also seen so many is. on video. It's, it's, right? it's, a, it's a 90, 10 per, uh, um, chance that he's going to fuck with me. That's right. And not 50, 50. I've 90, never 10. had a horrible racial experience. But, but you've point, seen so many on video. That's right. I don't now, want the interaction. Now do you understand why white people cross the street when they see you guys? No. No. We are not. They've the, seen a lot of video. No. A lot They've of video seen what? a lot of video. So why don't we act like that with white people then? What yeah, do you mean? Way what more. do you mean? We've seen way more. White people acting up and doing something to black people. We can't even do nothing to y'all. What's wrong with you? Historically. I, I was just making a joke, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? We can do something to y'all happen? What the fuck are you talking about? I we're we're going to actually bring up I real numbers videos. here, guys. Oh, we're being for real? <laughs> I think see these Last videos. time we did that, Taylor got fired from the podcast. So let's just Taylor chill. Taylor did not get fired. Taylor is doing what she's supposed to be doing. I miss you, Taylor. Which is producing. I okay? miss Taylor producing in-house. She'll be here next week, but she got to make follow proper COVID protocol. Oh, she got to go through yeah, protocol. That's all. That's all. Listen, yeah. everybody has to focus on what they're here to do in the moment. Mm. Now, if you grow out of that, and you want to do other things in the future, salute. Salute. Not mad at that at all. You Bless. know what I mean? But just don't let, you know, what you're doing Interrupt uh, be impacted by something that you ain't got no business doing. But you know what's great? We got this new kid that's that's working for us right now. And um, and he's he's 18 years old, just out of high school. And the kid out there? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, wow. Rough life. Dude, it's it's dude, it's amazing. Guy's cleaning up all the time. Like throwing a fucking garbage Word out. Like great. That, that new energy you need in a company yes. Yes. because it makes everybody else go, oh shit, I got to do that shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yes. saying? That's it why is really I, good. Check everybody entitlement. But that's exactly. why- Like the I, interns when they try so hard. That's right. That's I like right. those. It, you know it why? lets everybody know, oh my God, like I, I got, go, go. Because you're one of those. Mm. The same mm-hmm. way we all still have our mm-hmm. inner child in us, we mm. still have that inner intern, that yeah. guy who was just still that guy, hard. a girl who was just happy to be there. Like, man, Sorry. what do I need to do? Mm-hmm. So he told me a funny story. He said that uh, 
did a, he was working at Home Depot, right? And uh, he, his boss asked him, so what are you trying to do in your future? Like, what do you want to do? And he's like, oh, I really want to work at Schultz Studios. Like, that That would be the dream. Wow. And uh, his boss told him, he's like, yeah, there's no chance of that happening. Uh, he goes, why don't you start figuring out like what you can do here? This is your best chance of doing it. And then I he don't got believe to, that story. Listen. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Maybe he's lying. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I just don't believe that story. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. And then he said he got to walk into his fucking boss's room the other day and, and say, uh, yo, I'm quitting. I'm going to work for Show Studios. That's dope. That ain't nothing. Nobody says that. Over the old man. No, 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 yeah, let me explain. No, 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 no. Hey, Let me explain what I mean hater, by bro. that. <laughs> where's, it, <laughs> no. where's my political correctness? You're no. politically <laughs> correct about everything else no. except me, let me I, motherfuckers. I, I've been literally arguing. We get old school seat of God back in the day. I've been debating about Smell this a fart all my morning. Ass. <laughs> no. I've been, I've been debating about this all morning because, you know, in the group chat, it's me, it's Wax, it's Nyla, it's Michaela, it's Taylor, right? Yeah. And Sim. And I'm talking to them yeah, well, about I don't want to be how, in that black ass group text anyway. But listen, I'm talking to them. <laughs> I'm talking to them about how people get gassed off the littlest things. Ah, uh, you understand what I'm saying? I think yes. he's still shitting I'm, on no, me. No, 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 no. I think he's Yo, still no, shitting no, on I'm me. Take, he just called the littlest no, things. Listen. Out, he just said out. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> he just salute, he's just salute to my, me, listen, salute yo. to that brother. Because yeah. he got an internship at Soul Studio. He getting paid? Ain't no internship. Oh, well, nope. great. He got paid. But guess what? But guess what? You still ain't did shit, young man. You not not you haven't. You still yeah. ain't did shit, young man. This is true. You still gotta earn your kid. You might fire him after two weeks, Schultz. Yeah. That's all. Not also saying true. you wouldn't. Not if he keeps cleaning up. But- <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit, bro. But he won't he, but he might want to grow out of that That's just right. cleaning up. Until he tells you, I ain't come here to clean. Yep. Mm. I came here to be a talent. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I came he, here to be the cameraman. To I be came honest, here to take Adam's job. He didn't come here to clean, but now that he does it, that will be part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful what you do to help out around the studio. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> you know how it is in a relationship. Don't, don't, don't stop it. I see it, but I, I see it all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just like- I yo, hear what you're saying, even though it sounded like you were shitting all over me. No. I, it, it did come across like that. Okay, I give. Uh, let's, let's say if it's the breakfast club. Yeah, right? let's talk about the breakfast club. And let's club. just say if there was somebody on the breakfast club and, you know, you let them talk every now and then, and then they started to get, you know, gassed up a little, feel like they part of the show, yada, yada, oh, okay. this and that, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your mind, you know what I mean? Like, bro, this is nothing to be gassed over. Yeah. Ooh. I don't give a fuck if it's the breakfast club. You ain't done shit. Like, what have you done? But the problem is people think that they're successful by proximity a lot of times in this area. Yeah. But sometimes it's somebody's one dream thing. to work at the breakfast club, right? And just getting that job is their first level of their dream. It might be, they might have 20 other dreams, but one of their immediate dreams is to get an internship. Check. To get into college, like okay. let's say you get into college, like yeah, you didn't graduate, but shit, that's that's still an accomplishment to get into the college of your dream. Yeah, but you, you know, know the ultimate. That, that, that's a that's a second place trophy. That's, Fuck that's that. not yeah. even second place. That's a third place. Yeah, you ain't that's finished. That's participation. Yeah. Hey, you made it to college. Congratulations. Yeah. That's like that. saying like, all right, you got married, you ain't saying. got I'm family. Now I'm on Solomon's side. Fuck that. Wow. What you say? What? 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 Well, some people start their family before they got married. That's true, too. But it's another level. Yo, real talk, like, being faithful for three years, like, that's nothing, bro. No, well, no, not. Too Yo, old. that's nothing, bro. Like, you I'm talk all this faithful shit. I've been faithful for almost six. Yeah, that shit is nothing. No, no, shit. Not six true. years? Hey, six hey, years, hey, son? No, no, no. That's barely a, no, no, that's no, a light no. sentence. Hey, three years. Well, you forgot shit. to pay your taxes? <laughs> Listen, Yo, come by on. the way, three years ain't shit. No. Six years. You know what else three years ain't shit? What? Three years of college. You better get that fucking fourth and get a degree. You're right, but come on, man. Give me You thought that was going to hit hard, so You thought that was going to hit hard. You thought that was going to hit hard. <laughs> you can tell he didn't go to college. <laughs> Skip the grade. He does. He, yo, he ain't gonna die laughing at me knowing college is four years. <laughs> I didn't know what the reaction was gonna be. I thought I was gonna get one. I was like, yeah, no reaction. Yo. He hit that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was gonna be laughter or like true, true. I'm like, damn, nothing. That ain't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't hit the mark. There's many, there's many successes you could have in your life. I think your accomplishment of six years of fidelity is great. Yeah, mine, I mine do think that's is, great. I think your two is thank great. You really too, appreciate man. that, yo. We're yeah, nobody I, gave no, my but I, I for real like, and I fuck with uh, you know, people who like stop drinking and shit like that, like. 
That big, first big, month is big, huge. Big, because it's right. an addiction. It's addiction. It's addiction. Yes. You got to salute somebody Absolutely. when they are sober. Yes, 100%. So, like, at any accomplishment, any goal you set, even if it's losing five pounds, like, that might be nothing. But if you set something out and then you do it, I don't care if it doesn't mean anything to the average person, but to you. But what if you get back fat again? That's fucked up. You should feel bad about that shit. And it depends how much you weigh when you lose the five. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I guess what I'm saying from like a self-esteem perspective, like when you decide that you're going to do something and then you do it, very few people say they're going to do things because they're afraid of the failure attached to it. So yeah. when you decide, yo, I'm going to do this thing and then you actually achieve it, I'd be you proud deserve of to okay. feel good okay. about it. Okay, no, no. Schultz is right, but this is what I would say. You still haven't done anything. It's still more levels. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. I'm glad you're in the door. But the ultimate now accomplishment. Now stop partying and keep going. Keep yes. going, man. Yes. And that's my problem. A lot of these guys and these girls, they stop and they celebrate yeah. and they spike the football. Nope. It's like, yo, it's so many other levels. You, you, only, you only score one point. You got yeah. a whole game to go. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. And, and it's like, once again, I think a lot of people think that they're successful by proximity. Mm. It's just like on social media. Just because you can at Diddy and Diddy might tweet you back, you're not Diddy. Yeah. Oh. You're not seeing eye to eye with, with, with Sean Combs or whoever it is, LeBron James, yeah. whoever it is. Like, that's why we, some shit, man, we might have to stop rewarding, bro. Like yeah. what? Like, if, <clears throat> uh, if, if I tweet you, all right, if somebody tweet, I, I forgot, the, it, was, it was a basketball, didn't somebody tweet, tweet a, I think it was CJ McCollum or something, and then they in, the person ended up on ESPN? Uh, why are you doing that? That's wild. Yeah. You're right. Why are you doing yeah. why? I mean, I happened right. with me once. I made fun of Kenny uh Kenny Smith's legs. And then they put that shit on. The tweet's not stuff. the tweet is fine. Yeah. But yeah. I'm talking about Getting actually doing an interview. Oh no, they did it. The person I th I believe they did. I'm I thought they just showed the tweets and whatever. And listen, I'm not listen, cool. maybe I'm just old school, but I just I see it too much, man. I see it when certain people get really, really gassed, and I can see how that ego trip will lead them on a journey to nowhere. Yeah. And that's what I yeah. tell people all the time. You want to take a trip that's man. not going to take you nowhere, let it be an ego trip. But usually that's quick success. Mm -hmm. Like if success takes time, usually there's some humility behind it. Or yes. if there's confidence, it's like, yeah, I'm confident because I worked 20 years to get yes. this shit. But like if you have quick success, it's almost like you got to trick yourself into believing yeah. why you're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's destiny. I'm meant to be here. But this that's, is, but that's the thing too. fuck it up too. <laughs> I hate when people get upset because they don't get what they're not even there to do. Like, if you're here to be a custodian, yeah, mm. right, and your job is to clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you walk in here one time and you're cleaning up, and I say something to you, yeah, and you yeah. get a little mic time, a little camera time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't start complaining that you're not getting no mic time and camera time because you're not here to be a personality. <laughs> this shit really. You're a custodian. This shit really got to you, baby. Because it's stupid. Yeah, no, Yo, really imagine losing you, and imagine losing opportunity or losing money because you're complaining about not getting time to do a job yeah, you're not even here to do. Real. This shit yeah. don't even make no. It, yo, it makes and no logical sense. To be sense. clear, you're not talking about Taylor. Mm. No, um, talking about the machine behind him. No, I'm not talking about Taylor. You're talking <laughs> about there's another idea. There's another potential situation. This whole generation. I don't know if I'm talking to Taylor. I don't think I'm talking to Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have Taylor in mind right now. No, but no, it is a generation. It literally it is. is a generational thing. Right. And I was having this conversation with Taylor and Michaela and Nyla and Sim this morning because I was. I don't want to see any of them make those kind of mistakes. Because mm -hmm. they trust me when I tell you they are mistakes. It's literally not putting the weed yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, but they gotta you gotta learn from it. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, you got a big journey and stuff like that going on. This is something you gotta learn from. You I don't gotta think fall you can, sometimes. I, I I'll give you a story, right? I remember when I used to work at this uh, we're syndicated on there now, Z93 Jams in Charleston, but that's why I started as an intern and as a radio personality. And I remember one time uh we used to do this thing where we would take the station vehicle and we would go to different towns in South Carolina, right? Like any any jock might get in a vehicle, might just pop up somewhere, have tickets, whatever. You just, hey, meet me at such and such right now, Peace. pull up. And I remember we had a list of like the different towns we were going to. And I remember Baby J and Tessa, salute to Baby J and Tessa, love them to death. They actually <laughs> were the breakfast club in Charleston, South Carolina. Lessons. They went to Monk's Corner. And I remember being so mad, like, why the fuck y'all going to Monk's Corner? That's my town. That's where I'm from. Yada, yada, yada. And I remember Baby J saying to me, yo, where you from? Said, you know where I'm from, from Monk's Corner. He said, yeah, because you, you, know, you say it all the time on the radio. They know you out there. Why don't you go to West Ashley? 
Why don't you go to some of it? They don't know you. Go somewhere where the people don't, don't, don't know you and haven't met you. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. He's right. Mm. You know what I mean? But initially, ego kicked in. I'm like, what the fuck? Yada, 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 yada. But he was absolutely yeah. positively correct. I don't think this generation, not saying everybody, because that's a big general statement. I don't think a lot of people in this generation are receptive to that because they got this shit and they got 50 people telling them they good or they great yeah. or what they should be doing. I would have uh, did that dumb ass shit too. You said what? I said they'd be like, oh, I would have did that dumb ass shit too. Like agreeing Every, with them. You know what I realized? Is like everybody got someone in their DMs saying that they're the best part of whatever they're doing. <laughs> yeah. and it don't matter how insignificant you are. Oh, There's dude. a motherfucker that will DM you and be like, bro, it would be nothing without you. <laughs> <laughs> yo, the show would be nothing without you. Yo, 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 Every yo, week. Yo, you saving the show, bro. Like, and then you think you're the only one getting those DMs. We've all got these DMs. Yes. And you think you're the only one getting those DMs in the beginning, right? So you just block out all the negative shit because you're like, oh, I got three DMs. And he said that I'm I'm mm -hmm. the one saving the fucking show. But you got to be honest with yourself in those moments. Yeah, you got to be like, am I really? What do I do? What am Can't I do doing? Nothing. Like, really? Like, Don't seriously, look at, sometimes take a step back and look at your resume and ask yourself, okay, why, why do they like me? Yeah. Yeah. Do they really like me? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they really like you. And sometimes they like you because you're great. Sometimes they like you because it's cool to like the underdog. Sometimes they like you because of the proximity of mm -hmm. the thing that you're around. Yeah. And sometimes a combination of all of them. Sometimes they love the role you play and you're the most relatable person, but they might not be speaking for the majority of the audience. But here's the thing. What if you don't even have a role? Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. Like we're, per we're talking, we're personalities. What yeah. if you don't have a role? Yeah. What if Alex said to you right now, like, yo, you know, man, you know, you, you know, I need, I need to be heard on this podcast. Yo. Well, if on flagrant, I would understand that. Okay. Cause he, because he plays, he plays a role. Yeah. He's got a mic yeah. on it on yeah. brilliant. I mean, I'm open to it because I know what he brings to flagrant. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be that shocking, but let's say it was just this podcast. We never did flagrant. Alex barely yeah, yeah, talks yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, my voice isn't being heard enough. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I'd be like, what you, what's going on? Like, what? I wonder if anybody around Howard Stern I, ever I had my role. Issue. Say what? I know how to play my role. There you go. Say, say that again, to. Alex. You know how to play my role. Playing the role, <laughs> playing your role, playing your position is such a lost art. Mm. Because so many motherfuckers are out of position. I don't think they know how to do it though. They don't know how to do it because of this. Yeah, we were trained. We had <laughs> yeah. to do it. Everybody we had chores. We had all the type of stuff we had to do. Everybody has an audience. Yeah. Even if, if if there was a janitor, and I keep using the janitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there was a custodian, we didn't hire a janitor. We hired an editor. <laughs> Oh, just, he's the editor? Yeah, he's just he's Mexican doesn't mean he's fucking clean. So. I didn't know he, that's no, why he number does one, everything. Number one, duh. I didn't know he was Mexican. You know what the fuck he was doing? Number, what? Huh? Number one, I got I, a two for one. <laughs> listen, number one, I didn't Happy know meal. he was Mexican. Number two, you didn't tell me what he did. You just said he comes in here. That's, and what he saying, that's not fair. Not I telling said he us he started was doing that extra. First of all, I love those kind of people. Yeah, because uh, that's the kind of person. I that's who I am. That's yeah. who I was. I would. Yeah. I start spraying whatever you need. It was something I read. I read something with it. Maybe it was a movie. It was something where it was like, you always look busy. Mm. So they was like, even if you just sitting around, like grab something, start dusting shit. And I was, th I'm that, I was yeah. that person. I'm like, oh, I'm a dust. I'm a dust. Just because you always want the person to do what you did. You notice that he's cleaning up. Yeah. You notice he's doing things he don't have to do. Yeah. That right there makes you like, okay, I like there's something that. there. He's hungry. I see, who, I see who want weed instead of cleaning up. Oh, that was definitely me. What's that? Yeah. You or what? I see if somebody want weed or like stuff like that. I, I know how to play my part. I know how to fill the, the air in the room. That's it. But I ain't trying to be the room. A guy said yeah. that to me yesterday. You know, the sales team came back uh, to iHeart and I went downstairs. I was going downstairs to, uh, to use the bathroom and um, the, the dude was sitting there. He was like, Shaw, man. I'm like, what's up, man? Good to see you. I ain't seen you since the pandemic, whatever, yes. whatever. He said, where's Wax? I said, oh, he's upstairs. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I'm gonna come up there and see him. I said, no doubt. He said, no, I'm bullshitting. He said, I don't really, really, really want to see him. You know what I'm saying? Unless he got something for me. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. I don't know nothing. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have I don't nothing to, to do with up. that. I don't know. The moral of the story is, man, I just don't want people to have a, a, a sense of entitlement. Uh, n n nobody owes you anything. And you're not deserving of anything other than what you work for. Yeah, maybe there's a separation between like uh, entitlement and uh, and like gratitude or happiness. Like you could have a goal, achieve it, and then feel really good about yourself. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you automatically feel like the world is owed to you. Gratitude and happiness is showed through your work ethic. I can give you examples 
of people like a page, people like a sim who yeah. gratitude and 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 their gratitude is shown through their work ethic, mm. meaning that mm-hmm. they're always around. Yeah. You know how Paige became an executive in my company? Yeah. Wax, no, because she wouldn't leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah. was always around. Like, I yeah. know oh, I'm coming. I'm going to be here. Like, she was there. She, st- she was playing roles way before she had official position. Yeah. yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Same yeah. thing with a Sim. Like, Sim literally learned everything. everything. She's my sister. Yeah. Like, everything. Everything. Camera work. Production, yes. yeah. programming. Yeah. She's Writing happy she's doing everything. To be there. Yes. Yeah. When you're happy to be there, it will show in your work ethic. Mm-hmm. When you're not happy to be there, it will, it will show. show in your ethic. work ethic. And guess what? It all gets noticed. The energy and it everything. It all noticed. gets noticed. And it gets rewarded. That's the thing a lot of people don't realize. Like, if you kill it, it is rewarded. I've never, I've never not seen it work. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. Not once. Not once have I seen somebody who is happy to be there. Gratitude is their attitude. Mm-hmm. It shows in their work ethic and they have not been rewarded for it. In fact, those are the people who it seems like they're accelerating fast. Yeah. The people who are stagnant are the people who find something to complain about all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah. They aren't happy to be there because not maybe reliable. they're not reliable. And by the way, maybe they're out of position. Yeah. The left tackle don't play quarterback. Most, Imagine most, the left tackle most, telling yeah. you, yeah. I need to be throwing the ball. Yeah. yeah. I'm supposed you're to catch interceptions. Yeah. yeah. You're a left no. tackle. Yeah. And you know, and the reason I, I, it's that too. The reason I'm using that example, because brother, the left tackle is just as important yeah. as the yes. quarterback. That's yeah. who protects the quarterback. The nuts, man. So the I don't car. care what position you play, if you're a producer, a board op. Very important, man. Music, everybody, the custodian, everybody yeah. plays a position. If the room wasn't clean, if the studio wasn't clean, we couldn't perform. Word, word up. Yeah. Who'd come in there and perform for a, di- a dirty fucking studio all the time? Yeah. Like, the everybody sheet, plays an important role. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all. So, you know, I just want to tell these kids, man, um, don't get gassed because an ego trip is a journey to nowhere. Oof. That's all. Let's pay some bills. Guys. This episode has been brought to you by keeping your fucking hair. As you can see, your boy's got a full head of hair. And uh, it's because I've been on keeps for over the last decade, man. I'm telling you. Or the actual, now I'm on keeps, but before I was on the uh, generic version of the drug. And uh, then once keeps popped up, I was like, nah, this is the one because they have absolutely everything you need. And you're doing it for $10 a month. I mean, that's when these treatments start at it. The reality is when it comes to balding, it is now a choice. You got to stop it before it starts. If you feel like you're losing any of your hair, even the slightest amount, you jump on keeps immediately and it's going to stay, it's going to stay, it's going to stay. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your home to keep your hair. But now that you have hair, you want to leave your home plenty and loosen up the grip on that wallet. Like I said, treatments start just $10 per month and Keeps offers the generic versions on top of discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. So remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take, Alex, between four and six months to see results. So act fast, all right? If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash idiots. Now, all these people that you know that got their hair transplant surgeries and all that kind of stuff, I just want to let you know every single one of them, every single one of them is also on the Keeps to Maintain their hair, okay? I promise you they're on the keeps or or essentially the exact same drug to maintain that transplant that they have. So you already see this working amongst your celebrity friends or the people you look up to. Let it work for you as well. Now let's get back to the show. Well, hold on. Let's 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 keep paying some Ooh, bills, man. That's Cause, a good, cause, good, cause good we, idea. We, we should talk about the chemistry of the brilliant idiots. The facts that, you know, we just be like, yo, let's go to the ads. Schultz know I couldn't read the Keeps ad. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Keeps ad has nothing to do with me. Yeah. All right? But when it comes to that CBD, though. Okay. Okay. The cushy dream. Uh. Come on, man. We know the world today is nuts. 
And just when it seems like things are getting better, we're hit with even more reasons to be anxious and uncomfortable. And that's where our friends at Cushy Dreams can help. Okay, Cushy Dreams specializes in high quality smokable CBD. And CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, inflammation, even pain relief and more. And smoking CBD gets it into your system right away so you don't have to wait long for the effects. Cushy Dreams Extraordinary CBD Rich Hemp Flower comes in eighth ounce cans and pre-rolled joints. Okay, it's weed. All right, that ships discreetly to you and directly to all 50 states. They offer indigo and sativa strains that deliver effects like relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream, whatever you want to do, Cushy Dreams has a product for you, okay? Now, whether you want to smoke beautiful bud or pre-rolls, Cushy Dreams has you covered. Their popular pre-rolled joints are rolled in organic hemp paper and feature an even slow burn. And pre-rolls are now available in five packs. Okay, go to cushydreams.com. That's K U S H Y dreams.com. Uh, use the checkout at checkout, use the promo code idiots for 20% off your next order. Smoke your CBD with promo code idiots and get 20% off the day. Now, let's get back to the show. Uh, do we have any church announcements? Yo, the infamous tour. Okay. Uh, these shows are crazy, man. Selling out like crazy. I'm just so excited, man. I can't uh, wait to come to one. It's going to be wild, yes, man. Bro. I don't even know which one to recommend for you to come to, bro. Definitely come. But, I'm going to uh, pick it by the city I like. All right, bet. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's going to be wild, man. And we're looking to shake some stuff up. So go. We are coming to your city. We added a few shows. I can't even believe that we're adding fucking shows. Some of these venue sizes are just nuts. I mean, we added another one in San Francisco. Uh, we're doing the Masonic Theater in San Francisco. We're doing the Chicago Theater in fucking Chicago. I mean, that's like a iconic venue. I can't believe we had another show. Uh, so Chicago, come show out for your boy. Uh, we added a fourth show for the special taping in Austin. Go get that. All these available at theandrewshows.com. Uh, thank you so much. Spread the fucking word. Get your tickets early. I hate seeing motherfuckers not be able to come to the show. Like Denver shows this weekend have been sold out for fucking months. Oh. Please go get them early. Don't get killed by these scalpers. Oh. Theandrewshows.com, the infamous tour. Go get them. And thank you guys so much for getting them early and spreading the word. Wax, you got any church announcements? Yes, sir. Please go get that uh, Who's Wax over in dispensaries over in L.A. And I got my um, I got my uh, THC. I got Delta 8s, man. The gummies. These are really, really dope, too. You How named many it, milligrams is that? You named uh, your THC 20 Delta? Right here, which is two of them. No, it's Delta 8. That's what they'll be able to go into stores. And I'm, I'm in a couple of gas stations and stuff like that, places y'all see gummies. So I'm expanding on that. And, oh, no. Um, it's 20, 20 a dick or one? No, is one is ten or twenty? Twenty. So one of those. Yeah, it's really wow. good. Okay. It's really, really good. It's Delta eight. I mean, these are the type of things I heard you. But these type of things I get to go inside the stores and stuff like that. So, um, and also you see my boots. I was on the paintball uh, facility. You know, getting you that see together. My boots, please donate to my GoFundMe. You know, what I'm saying? Saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't need no GoFundMe. <laughs> my GoFundMe. You're right. Go to my GoFundMe. Is actually the paintball spot. You know, what I'm saying, go sign up. You know what I'm saying? Get your 10 people. I want all the podcasts to start coming together. I'm doing podcast wars. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all come out there and come, you know, come shoot around and have fun. Mine is simple, man. Uh, BlackEffect.com. Uh, salute to my guy, Scarface. My guy, Willie D. Uh, we launched the Ghetto Boys Reloaded podcast uh, today. Well, today today is Thursday, but on yesterday, they were the number one podcast in the, um, in the music section. Actually, it was one day this week. We had like Five podcasts in the top ten in the music section. I know Nyla and Mouse was in the was uh for the what um uh drink champs of course. Salute to N O R E. Um, who else? Uh, uh, who else was in the top ten? Top five? I don't remember, but I know the Ghetto Boys Reloaded uh was number one as of yesterday, man. And like, if you want to hear two OGs who don't give a fuck <laughs> 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 because they are made men already. Go listen to Scarface and Willie D, man. Like mm. I, I, I love those brothers, man. Because you know, it, it's it's interesting when you grow up uh, listening to somebody and you have a perception of them in their in your head. Mm. And like Willie D is just the logical, common sense OG who's gonna pull your card when they think you're doing some bullshit, mm. and who's gonna salute you. When he see you doing some dope. OG man, yeah, real and, OG, and he's always he's always done that with me. You know, pick pick up the phone, call me, tell me when you think I'm on some bullshit. New or old, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, He'll call me and think I'm on some bullshit, and he salute me when I'm doing dope shit, man. So I thank him for that. And Scarface, man, 
one of my favorite MCs of all time, yes. always comes so, through for me. He wrote the forward for my uh my second book, Shook One Anxiety, playing tricks on me, because the subtitle of that book, of course, was based on the legendary Ghetto Boy song, Mind Playing Tricks on Me, because that whole song is about anxiety. Mm. You know what I mean? And people dealing with their own trauma and PTSD and stuff. Yeah. So salute to them. Make sure you go check out their podcast. Go to blackeffect.com to check out all the podcasts. And this right here, Shallow Waters by Anita Kopax. It'll be out August 3rd. It's the second release on um, Black Privilege Publishing which is my my book imprint, Salute to Tamika Mallory, State of Emergency, How to Win in the Country We Built, best-selling book. That's out right now. But this right here, Shallow Waters, it's a young adult fiction book about the Yoruba deity of the sea, Yimiya. It'll be out August 3rd. So, What made you choose this one? Man, that is a great uh, question. And yeah, I mean, my, my, my sacred purpose coach, That's her it. name is Yadi Alba. Uh, Yadi is just... An incredible person. If you want to know what a sacred purpose coach is, it's like a, a spiritual therapist. It's like an avatar in the front. The, the, like that's a red that's not avatar. avatar. No, I'm saying avatar is blue, but it's red. It's yeah. kind of dope. I like it. But but Yadi is my sacred purpose coach. So she's like a, a spiritual therapist, man. And she said that she was in the water. This is last year, last summer. She said she was in the water. And, you know, she got the download from God. She was like, I got to connect, you know, uh, Leonard with Anita. And, you know, what's so Jeez. crazy is Yadi didn't know I had a book imprint coming. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like she had no idea. So she was like, I want to connect Lenar with Anita because Anita got this great, this great book, you know, called Shallow Waters. And I think Anita might have been with another publisher and things didn't work out. So, I, you know, she connected me with Anita and Anita sent me that, sent me the manuscript. And I remember just sitting outside under the pergola and I read it in like a few hours. And I'm like, yo, this was phenomenal. You know what I mean? And immediately I wanted my, my daughter to read it. My daughter's 13. I need you to tell people what this book is about. Cause I'm mm-hmm. reading the back mm-hmm. of this book and I had no fucking clue that this is what it's about. No, I'm amazing. You're reading it two hours. I thought this shit was about mermaids. <laughs> shit. It is about mermaids. No, it's not. It's yes, about it a girl is. who's taken from Africa to America in the slave no, trade. No, 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 and no, And then no, she's no. in, sp- and then she no, uses the it. power of Yimiya. No, 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 no. Yimmy, it's about Yimiya. And I don't want to give too much of the book away, but I can. It's like just, a love story. Can I Her, read? Can I read the end? Go ahead, can go I just read, read the back? That's, that's the back. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes. And I want everybody listening because he's been talking about this book for a lot three months. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Only at all. three, six. I don't know. I just want to see what you. The were last saying. one. <laughs> Years. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, y'all would talk about it's that shit forever, bro. It was like church. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Christ is on his way. <laughs> Okay. State of emergency. <laughs> How to win with the man that y'all crucified. <laughs> Shallow Waters imagines Yemiya, an Orisha, a deity in the religion of Africa's Yoruba people, cast into mid 1800s America. Mm-hmm. Okay. We meet Yemiya as a young woman, still in the care of her mother and not fully aware of the spectacular power she possesses to protect herself and those she holds dear. The journey laid out in Shallow Waters sees Yemiya confront the greatest evils of this era, transcend time and place in search of Obatala, a man who sacrifices his own freedom for the chance at hers, and grow into the powerful woman she was destined to become. We travel alongside Yemiya from her native Africa Mm -hmm. and on to the new world with vivid pictures of life for those left on the outskirts of power in the nascent Americas. Yemiya realizes the fighter within travels the underground railroad in search of the mysterious stranger Obatala and crosses paths with icons of our history on the road to freedom. That's right. Shallow Waters is a nourishing work of ritual storytelling from promising debut author Anita Kopax. Yeah, so basically, Yimmy Ya is a mermaid. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one fucking that sound second. Like okay. a lion Hold king. on one. <laughs> Al, <laughs> Al, 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 I need, I need you to objectively say if the Aqua, Black Aquaman movie that he's been describing for the last three months. Aqua Woman. The Aqua oh, Woman. sound nothing like what you've been talking about. <laughs> that's exactly what I've been talking about. Nothing. Like I ain't it. even hear an Aqua Woman in that. What do you no, mean? I've been telling y'all You've been talking about African. mermaids and all shit, not Underground Railroad. Because she's an African mermaid, the Yoruba deity of the sea, Yemiya. She falls in love with a no, guy no. who lives on land who gets enslaved. So she follows the slave ships to America, and then when she gets to America, you gotta get, the, you gotta. So she why, is actually a mermaid the She's whole time. Actually, a mermaid. Are you sure that a hundred percent? Well, 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 well. You gotta read the book. <laughs> You've seen Splash, right? No. 
You've never seen the classic movie Splash no. with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah? I didn't either. Who are you humans? No, nah, bro. You've never seen Splash? No. Nah, Splash dude. was incredible. Splash, and she was a mermaid, but she could also have legs. She got her mermaid when she went to the water. Mm, Little nah. Mermaid. you never seen Splash? Y'all got to nah. watch Splash. I've seen Little Mermaid. Kids, Google Splash. Why would she be on a railroad if she was a mermaid? You got to <laughs> read the book. It's the 1800s, man. Underground mm. Railroad. Well, why don't you go underwater railway? She did that. Mm. Okay. She gets from water to land to find her boo who was enslaved. She got wet. Duh. Ah, Don't not know paying what, attention. Now, just out about. of curiosity, when <laughs> Don't know what wax is <laughs> what, about. No, I think I think it makes sense here. Now, when Obatala goes down on her, he's like, yo, this is kind of fishy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you gotta do that to everybody? <laughs> you ruined the purest thing, man. <laughs> Why? Wow. He got a point though. Obatala got a point. Like he down there, like, oh, I taste like the ocean. And she gotta going be on. like, I am the ocean, bro. Like I got He's scales wet. and all that hey, shit. Hey, by shit. the way, by the way, let's be, let's be honest. Man, what? that's how I'd be feeling though. When you you ever jumped in that blue Caribbean water? And how nourishing it feel yeah, and how it just it's a little it, thicker. It, it the makes you a feel thicker. healed. Like yeah. that's how that that vagina you love be feeling too. Does it? Yeah. I don't know. But does it taste like that sushi dinner, bro? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with sushi? Scallops. Say what? <laughs> no, I love sushi. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, you do. You're describing this vagina. This is a spectacular vagina you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> But the moral of the story is shallow water's out August 3rd. Yo, but yeah. now that y'all know what their book is really about, go out there and support this book and get this book. <laughs> okay, because before y'all had no a fucking clue. You thought you were watching Black Little Mermaid, track. bro. You had no fucking clue what the book is about. The girl's on land the whole time. She's doing the underground railroad. She's probably bumping into fucking Harry Harriet Tubman. Tubman and shit, is in it? Oh. Oh, oh, is that the big reveal? <laughs> Who else you gonna run into on the underground railroad, Charlotte? Nobody else. Who else? Well, Who else you knew from the John Henry? Railroad? John Henry. Come on, yo. Oh, yeah? <laughs> the fuck? Well, that's what I said. Yeah, of course you're going to bump into these it's people, bro. a lot bro. of historical figures. Avatar, in the book. too. There's Avatar Come in the on, Avatar son. Avatar is not around in wax. Avatar is the future. No. Well, yes. I'm just saying, now that y'all know what the book is really about, meet, yes. get ready for these copies of Fly. I should have nice. read uh, Tamika Malley's book to make sure that's what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> Tamika Malley might have a completely different book. Is it Black Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and let's take it down and let the Mexicans in <laughs> listen man I'm just here to tell you to get it okay <laughs> that's what my job is y'all said need right. a copax it's about the art the artists have to explain their art but I can just tell you that I love the book and you know as a person who grew up on Judy Bloom and Beverly Clearly and those type of young adult fiction books Peace. man it gave me that kind of energy and the fact that it's a black woman who wrote it mm. it's about a black character because my mother Mother told me to read things that don't pertain to me when I was young. That's why I read Judy Bloom and Beverly Clearly because I didn't know nothing about no little white girls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is like, yes. Without spoiling it, does Obatala get uh, get to taste that yummy yum? I can't say. Mm. I, John I, Henry. I don't want to give all that away. John Henry is a beast. John Henry is a beast, bro. Yo, yeah. do mermaids get periods? Because that sharks would probably be all over that. Oh. Son. There's no way they can. <laughs> Too much. Son, that's dangerous, right? <laughs> Very that's dangerous. Not dangerous. Yeah. That's not dangerous, yeah. bro. He's just driven. I literally blood. thought about that. Like, do girls go in the, well, the, the ocean gonna, with their periods? I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's a very logical point. That's a lot. Yeah. We got to know, yo. I, I think that's a very lot. I would we, like, I, I've never read anything about it. All I'm saying, I need to go back. I need to go back. Go watch Shallow Waters, bro. Oh, August third. Go yeah. watch. But you can pre-order now. You can pre-order now. Webby. Shallow Waters, exactly where you need to be if you're a mermaid with your periods or them sharks don't eat your fucking ass. Okay. That's why you go. That's, that's that's why you go on the railroad. That's where you need to be. Oh god. Come get on, on that now. Y'all gotta chill out. Now. Let's get in. You got a fucking run. yo, Charlamagne. You are a wild boy, yo. I need a copac. Shallow Waters. Let's get into You're some shit wild, you don't care bro. about next week. What we got? 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 What we yo, got? Yo, the guy in um that was punching in the ground, right? Bushwick Bill. All right, you saying he had anxiety? That's why he was doing that? 
I mean, if you listen to the song. R.I.P. though, didn't he pass? He passed away. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, that's what anxiety do. I know what anxiety do that make you I do mean, that. You're, you're hallucinating. Like, you know, I, I, he, he actually might have went a step further. That might have been some like paranoid. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking, don't tell me. Which Bill was dealing with. Don't tell me if, um, anxiety do that to you. I'm like, Because he was hallucinating. He thought it was Halloween and it wasn't Halloween. <laughs> he thought he was you're fighting punching somebody. The ground? Yeah, he's he thought he was fighting some up. six foot because 10 of monster. A drug? Because of a drug. Man. Anxiety. No, no, not just anxiety. Usually there's some sort of drug. This like, year, Halloween film, he can be in I don't know if he was on a drug. I don't know. I, to me, that I took that verse as like an extreme, I would say, now now that I have the language, I would say paranoid schizophrenia. That's what that verse think, seemed like. I think you know that might have been. But also, if you didn't know it was I Halloween say bipolar. and then you just went out, like, that's a that's crazy. Wow, boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Like, if you didn't know it was Halloween, you go outside, you see all these people, like, that's not wild? Wow, boy. Oh, this is a good. This is good shit. You won't care about next week. All right, go. The baby, uh, not paying the kids for candy good. when they tried to hustle him. I don't think he don't did try to either. hustle me, bro. I hate it. I, hate, I give it to you. Word is born. I hate when people come at you and expect you to do something because of who they know you are, or because of what they think you got. Fuck you. I hate you that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're selling candy, and let's say the candy mm -hmm. is a dollar a candy bar, and let's say you got 30, 40 bars in there. Mm -hmm. If I ask you how much for the box, don't tell me 200. No. Nah. Hmm. I treat everybody the same. I don't care for who you are. You could be Oprah if it's a dollar, a dollar for Oprah. You're trying to finesse You know me. what I'm saying? And you people online that are saying things like, oh, well, you know, the baby got it. You're essentially saying it's okay to con people if it's you know they cool. got it. It's not cool, bro. I hear what you guys are saying. I'm not going to give much pushback. I, I, I think I'm with you. Because it's a weird situation because when you say a crazy number like that, yeah, he got it, but he doesn't want to get hustled. And he doesn't want to negotiate with a kid. Now, I negotiate with a kid, but if you make it make sense and, and I don't see you trying to hustle me in the beginning, I'll fuck with you. But you're all that trying to hustle, I'm like, I got to teach you a lesson. You do that again, somebody might Word fuck up. you up. If I told you that I got 30, 40 candy bars and they're a dollar a piece, yeah. right? That's $40. I'm going to give you a hundred. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm probably going to tell you, keep the change. The fuck baby the told Speedy. Keep the candy bars. Keep the candy bars. And no, keep the no, candy bars. I, no, I, <laughs> I, I usually do that, too. I, I love to keep their product, too. If we talk about teaching kids lessons, you can't do that. That's not how this works. I see what really? you're saying. That's I not how this works. Saying. You don't go in no fucking store. If you let them keep it, they never re-up. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'm taking the goddamn Make sure he run it it's real. a transaction, yep. right? Real. But uh, I saw him tell Speedy, I'd have gave him $1,000 if they'd have just kept it 100. Why are you trying to finesse the guy? I hate that. Why? Does the baby got money like that? Hell yes. Really? He's killing it. Bro, the yeah. baby was one of the the baby is one of the biggest hip hop artists now. out. And you know, man, put it like this. When we had the baby on Breakfast Club last year during the pandemic, he had to cancel the tour that he was supposed to go on that summer. I said, Man, how much money you think you're missing out on over the next 90 days? He said, Man, all right, like six million. Yes, the baby makes a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> That's good money. That's a lot of millions. Yeah. I'll put, hey, I'll tell you this. The baby, salute to the baby, salute to my man Arnold. You know what I mean? Uh, this is this is this is kind of inside baseball, but it don't matter because it's not like it's a bad story. Um, one of my partners in Charlotte was having uh, like a sweet sixteen, you know, for they for for they for their child, um, and uh, they wanted the baby. Baby lives in Charlotte, and it was like I think like twenty thousand. He might have had, you know what I mean? Just for just to pull up, you in Charlotte? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> like no, no, and you in Charlotte? Yeah, I would have went and got that money. It's right around the corner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, no, nah, nah bro. He's waiting for perform a little birthday party. He wasn't even gonna perform. They wanted him to pop up dick. for how long? I don't know. Twenty, but it's twenty. He's like, nah, the baby not showing up. For that. Baby makes a lot of money. Yeah, and, and but you saw the big stack of money he had in his hand. But that's not even the point. Yeah, people will think people think they can get over on you because you're you. It's fucked yeah. up. I had something like that happen last week. And that's, I, I was telling, I, I told, I, I, I paid for a service through a family member. I told him, please do not let the person know it's, it's me because uh -huh. I, I feel like they're going to tax. You know what I'm saying? And Experience is the best teacher, but go ahead. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. People see it's the baby. They think they can finesse. Mm. I don't think that's cool. Finesse and I don't finesse think that. Okay, how much money you got? Word Fuck is bond. Because you. you're essentially saying it's okay to con somebody because they got it. It's like if I if I paid for my if I gave my credit card somewhere 
And then somebody took five hundred dollars off my credit I don't card. Okay, they took two dollars. Is a problem. I'm yeah. supposed to be okay. Oh, he yeah. got it. Yo, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. you got it. Why are you tripping? The fuck you mean? Why I'm tripping? Yeah, I'll be mad as hell. Somebody steals smoke my me. blunt. Yeah, it's the somebody principle. Smoke my blunt, and I don't give a fuck how much weed I got. I don't wax. I got my weed. Whatever. You smoke my blunt, I'm gonna fuck you up. But that's just disrespectful. Yeah. Ask, 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 ask me. This you got me. enough. You got enough. Why? Why ask? Huh? That's what I'm saying. That's how they. That's how they feel. You oh yeah, enough. yeah. Why like man, you got plenty weed, yo. You got plenty of weed. You tripping? Like, yeah. What are you talking I'm about? For. Like it's the principles. Know, I don't period. think the baby did anything wrong. Respect everybody. And those young men learned a valuable lesson. Number one, just keep it one hundred. How much it cost for the box? Well, the candy bars are two dollars a piece. It's such and such candy bars in this box is sixty dollars, whatever it is. Mm. Cool. If I promise you, the baby would have gave you hundred dollars and told you to keep the change. Probably would have gave you two hundred dollars and told you to keep the change. He told Speedy he would have gave you a thousand. I'm sure he would have because he told his camera guys to roll. Because he's like, this is going to be a moment. He's smart. This guy understands social media. Oh, he definitely does. I'm mm-hmm. going to cake off these kids when they have when buy their candy bars, and I'm going to look like the savior, giving kids a bunch of money. They're going to go crazy. And then the kids flipped it on him. They're like, all right, 2000 He's <laughs> well, like, these little son of bitches don't even want to go viral. It's a lesson for a whole lot of people, though. A whole lot of other kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. Yeah. I, I just, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what lessons these kids are learning. Oh, nowadays. can I tell you? Because those two kids might be looking at that video like, yo, we lit. Look at how many views this shit got on Shade Room. You yeah, never know. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know what uh, moves people anymore. I really don't know what lessons these kids are learning. I don't know I, what they get out of these things. I got a lesson. And this is a conversation we had on Flagrant. We had Ak on. And okay. Ak was talking about, guy, uh, yo, shout out to Academics, man. Hilarious episode. And he did, um, and we were talking about Lil Baby. And I was explaining to Ak, and I was like, I got to be honest with you, I don't think Lil Baby has crossed over. And he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, I understand from speaking to you mm-hmm. that like Lil Baby is the biggest artist. Like, Jeez. And I think within the black community, Lil Baby is massive. He's the biggest fucking thing on the planet. Like Selena in Spanish. It's Selena in, exactly. Like what Selena was to Mexicans and shit, when oh, at the Mexican. point we didn't know who the hell she was, but Mexicans loved her. Like it was yes, crazy. Amazing. So- and I was like, I'll be honest with you, I don't think white people got enough room for two babies. I think there's the baby <laughs> and little baby, and white people don't, not enough white people know which one is which. And, it's two and then he told me that, that little baby's tour with Dirk was struggling to sell tickets. And I really wonder if in order to like sell out the arenas, you need white fans simply from a population standpoint. Like, White people are what a little bit over maybe fifty percent of the country. If it you is. want to sell out arenas, you're gonna to need to have access to all three hundred million I don't people think he's that doing are arenas, here. Though I think he's doing like theaters and large venues. I don't think he's doing arenas. I think they were like twelve thousand seaters. What was he saying, Al? Just so you clarify. I think I, I think that's. I, I I don't totally disagree with your point. I think the baby's on little baby's on his way though. Um, just because yeah. like you know he was the, he sold more records than Taylor Swift last year. Like he was the he was the highest selling artist of any genre of music last year. That's a and fact, right? There's no question. So he's on his way. And when you look at he he performed at every award show. Yeah. Billboard, Grammys, American Music Award. Like so he's he's definitely on his way. Definitely on his um, way. I but I think the uh, the concert thing is tricky only because I think we're still in a pandemic. I don't. That's fair. Yeah. I, that's fair. I I I just say this because I just think it's weird that he hasn't permeated my my music listening on. Now, I'm the last person to find an artist. Like, I'm listening to fucking top 40 and shit like that. Like, I'm not really searching. But for how big he is within the black community, for me not to name a single song, I can't name a single baby lyric. Like, mm-hmm. something's going on, well, right? Still new. I mean, the Little Baby is, like, still very new also. My name is... <laughs> what? That's Eminem. I know. But you saying. know that one. I was just saying. Like, is Lil Baby that big? No. I, I was really concerned about is more white people than Mexicans? They always got babies. I don't now, never see white now, people. Now, 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 but what, eventually they got it, bro. Was it 2040? They said that white people won't be the majority. Yeah, y'all be the minority. 2040. That's a lot of y'all. But now Lil, ba- Lil Baby's definitely on his way. Like he's he's definitely on his way. I keep saying it. I'm not little little baby is on a little Wayne type trajectory. And he's you know, moving. Let's, sure. let's be clear. Lil Wayne crossed over. Like, I, Earth, I, I but, but it took a while. No, it didn't. It was immediate. The no. second Bling Bling came out and it was a wrap. I can tell you, I remember. Nah. He, he I remember it. I remember the Hot Boys. I remember the whole thing. What's going on with that life? Yeah, but that's because the Hot Boys was so big at the time. Yeah. Like, Juvenile backed that ass up was a goddamn sensation 
1998. You know what I'm saying? And Lil Wayne was on that record. But when Lil Wayne became like that super household name, yeah. that was like Carter three. I don't know. We Carter all knew three is when he, he came was. out with Lollipop, sold a million records in a week. You know what I mean? Then he came out with Carter Four, sold another million records. That's when he introduced Young Money, introduced the world to Drake and Nicki and everybody else. I'm like, just yeah. telling you from white people. Mm -hmm. You guys are more plugged into music, obviously. You're more plugged into hip-hop. I can only tell you when white people are going to adopt a new musician and feel like, oh, this guy's next. I don't like, so, I don't so, like so hearing white, white, white artists adopting black anything. <laughs> we do adopt y'all. <laughs> so, so who's the we white do. person over there? We with do y adopt y'all. Right we like who? to adopt. Who's the we white like person to go over out there? of our race with adoption. So who's, who's the guy? Person? Who's the well, biggest yeah. artist to white people right yeah. now? Drake. It's not even close. Right. No, I mean, for Yada, who the white person that we Yo, adopt over here's here? How, here's how crazy it is now. There's this new artist named Olivia Rodrigo that's killing the fucking charts. Her whole album. Never heard of her. I never heard of her neither, bro. I, I heard of her. Let me see. My daughter's born. Your kids? June 27. My daughter had a luau at the house. See? Nonstop, and Olivia all, Rodrigo. She, it took you a couple weeks ago to do That's all she was it. saying. Like, Olivia Rodrigo. We want to hear Olivia. I'm like, who the fuck is Olivia Rodrigo? <laughs> and it's so funny because- I'm listening to my daughter who just turned 13 and all her friends that are like they 12, 30. And they're, they got this whole love triangle thing. And me and the parents are sitting around and the parents are like, I don't like this music. It's too depressing. It's female school shooter music. <laughs> That's what it is. It, it, yeah. This is this female school shooter music. When women Have there ever been a female school shooter? There have never been because they could make albums. Adele, all these women that mm. when they have this... <laughs> They go put out this amazing music. They channel their energy. Uh, exactly. Right. Taylor Swift, all of them. Okay. That's female okay. school shooter music. Okay. They would shoot up schools if they didn't have this sort of pop music that they could make. 100% guaranteed. 100%. It's therapeutic. It's therapeutic for them. You, you got to yes. let women. I told you white women, be careful. Yeah. I told you white women, be careful. You white me? Women, bruh. Thank yeah. White women don't start singing. They're going to start shooting. Now, I sat there one weekend and I knew <laughs> all about. Singing or shooting for white women, bro. I knew all about Olivia and the love triangle with Josh and Sabrina. You got into it, huh? No, not really. I, know, <laughs> I just know those names. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, now nah, you know that fucking song. My, 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 my niece Olivia is like, Rodrigo don't want no man to be happy after she be, ever he'd been with her, bro. Bro, even last he week, my, no niece, happiness. my yeah. niece and my daughter the same age. So my niece, she's like, Olivia Rodrigo is a genius. <laughs> And I'm like, do Why? I introduce her to Stevie Wonder nah. now? Nah. No. Like, what do you mean genius? Much. What is genius? Nah. Wow, that like, might be you know too what? much for them. Let the kids have with the, whatever. Yeah, the that's their have, genius. Bro. That's Stevie Wonder, bro. I don't, I'm not saying she's not. I ain't listened to enough of her. I don't know what she does. Mm. Other than the parents complaining that she makes depressing music. She makes depressing ballads, but like poppy ballads about being upset that her old man is with a new girl. And it drives her crazy. And they like it. Oh, these kids love. No, they it. really they love it. They fucking love the, it. Like it taps into something. She's their visceral. Mary J. Blige. Ooh, she's, the, she's, she's tweens Mary J. Blige. I think. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, like remember how Mary, we to, Mary Lauren? I don't know about Lauren because there was a point where people used to listen to Mary, especially when it came to like you know, like having like emotional issues in a relationship yeah, when you were peace. going through it with your yeah. significant other. We used to say, "Man, we love when Mary's hurt." Because she makes this yeah. great music. That's like Olivia That's Rodrigo. Up. Now this should is that make sense. Is her name Rodrigo? Rodrigo? Yeah. But I remember when you came on a podcast wearing the uh, Mary J. Blige Timbs. <laughs> and that was right before you got faithful, bro. I remember this shit. You were going through it. No, I was faithful you then. Were, nah, wait, what you year were? was this? Tell me what nah, year. No, no. Nah, it was before that. You were going <laughs> through it. You had really had, you had, it wasn't 40 below. It was coming up to your kneecap. It was 80 below. That shit was up here, bro. That shit was Somebody gave the wrong one. They gave the wrong one. Them shit wasn't for <laughs> hey, them shit wasn't 40 below. They actually about might have been 400 degrees. Son. It looked a little too hot, bro. Son, like, it was moist, bro. <laughs> them shits came up to your thigh, bro. This shit was it came past your knee. I remember you bent your knee and the shit kept going past your knee, <laughs> bro. Like oh, what the fuck is going on with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's walking like a penguin, I the bro. Wrong tomb, man. <laughs> I had to do something. I <laughs> <laughs> but how would you talk to me about which Tim's to get? Son, that shit was crazy, bro. Nah, shit was you were probably going through it emotionally, nah, and then Mary was, was speaking to you in that moment, bro. I gave him shit away, too. To you. Who you gave them shits to, bro? <laughs> Fucking. I, gave him, I, gave, I, think I, I think I gave him to my man. I think I gave him White to White Howard, motherfucker? Who'd you give them nah, shit to? I think I gave him to Deli. What? He know what better. He know better. No, he liked them. 
Mr. Nah, he was yo. When he, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I saw him on <laughs> Delhi, he was rocking them dope, though. No, no, no way. Stop it, bro, stop it, stop they it. look good on him. I'm telling no, you, they I'm don't, bro. man. Son, it was mad funny because during the podcast, you just kept scratching <laughs> under your knees, and it was itchy. like it's a cast. <laughs> like it's a cast. What, what a hanger. <laughs> look like he the got, white. <laughs> he got a pen in there. <laughs> I look like the white woman of Victoria's Secret. Just laid straight. <laughs> <laughs> I keep these shit all day. Up. Uh, nah, them shit was fucked up. Uh, hey, don't play with Tim's, man. Just stick to what you used. Yeah, Get come the on, man. Slow down. Hundred percent. Them shit was stupid. Them shit was stupid. What else? Oh, let's pay some bills. <laughs> let's pay some bills. I want to come back. I want to talk some more about the acting. Oh, I too. got this. Okay. All right, guys. We can stop for a second. Pay some bills, guys. I got to tell you about honestly the greatest underwear I've ever put on my body in my entire life. I'm not joking around. This 100. percent It's culprit. It's culprit. It's culprit. You guys probably saw a wild. Um, Video we did for them when uh when we were in Miami, you know, doing a bunch of shit, stealing Ferraris and blowing up clubs and riding jet skis and all that kind of shit. But I'll tell you, these dudes are absolutely amazing and they make the best underwear on the fucking planet. I'm rocking them right now, matter of fact. See the culprits. And um, I swear to God, I haven't worn another pair of under underwear since I put these on. This is you, not uh, the copy for the ad. This is me telling you directly that these are the best underwear I've ever put on my body. And after I put them on, I stopped wearing any other pair of underwear. If you right now are unhappy with whatever underwear you are wearing, do buy one pair. Just buy one pair and you'll see what I'm talking about. Just buy, buy bare one. If you don't believe me, buy one again. DM me if I'm wrong. I promise you it's the most comfortable pair of underwear you've ever worn in your entire fucking life. I shit you not. Okay? You shouldn't talk about shit when you're talking about underwear. <laughs> They've got special things for the shit in the underwear. Special, special things. The insides are brown, so you never even know if it's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the case. But still, but, but, still, but still, yo, they got amazing designs. They're absolutely hilarious, the designs. You go to their fucking uh, Instagram right now and check it out. Their Instagram is actually underwear. Somehow they got their Instagram underwear. Wow. Check out all the different designs they got, but I'm telling you, Fuck the designs. Even though the designs are absolutely hilarious, it's amazing. The comfort is crazy. You'll never wear another pair of underwear your entire life as long as they keep making them. Culprit, culprit, culprit. Go get it. Um, I'm telling you, this brand pills, no punches. Where else are you going to get sharks eating surfers, raptors doing drugs, Godzilla eating samurais? They ship worldwide, but they're made right here in the USA. And unlike other underwear that falls apart, this is you know made in a Sri Lankan sweatshop where it's illegal for women to hold public office or in China where there's an ongoing genocide. You can feel absolutely amazing in your sustainably made culprit underwear. Now, how is it so eco-friendly? Well, it's made locally by workers earning a living wage, and the fabric is 95% micro, whatever the fuck that word is, which is made from beech trees and uses 20 times less water than cotton. So it's good for the environment. It's good for your balls. They feel absolutely amazing, and you're going to go get them. So you go to culpritunderwear.com. Use the code IDIOTS at checkout. You're going to get 20% off your order. They also have them for ladies as well. Get them lady boxers. This is what you're going to wear. Ladies, buy it from your boyfriend. Surprise him. You surprise him, and he's going to go, holy shit, these are the most comfortable underwear I've ever read. You're going to put them on because you're going to be walking around the house and need something to wear like my fiance did, and now she needs to have them. That's the only boy short she wears. So go get them right now. These are good guys. I fuck with them. They support the pod. Let's get back to the show. Well, no, let's salute Squarespace too, man. Holy Why shit, not, my bad, man. yo. I'm in such a rush all the time. Let's salute Squarespace. You know what I mean? Whatever you need, domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. You'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging, and publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events on anything you can dream of. I mean, can you really operate any type of business or sell yourself in any way without a website? site nowadays. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes and get to know your audience with their analytics tools. Those include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography, and more. It's all so simple too. start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. All websites are optimized for mobile. Your site looks great on any device. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. These SEO tools are paramount. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. Um, Stephen A. Smith. Yes. Let's play the audio, Alex. 
Uh, what were your thoughts on what he said about the baseball player whose name I can't pronounce? Uh, he got one word wrong. What's the word? Harm. Talk to me. Somebody not. I, here's the thing that's annoying. We all know what he was trying to say. Yes. And unfortunately, what happens is when you feed a certain part of the media system that their diet is consistent of uh, of outrage and you give them a nourishing meal that they can be outraged about, they just going to get to work. They also knew what he was saying. When Stephen A. Smith said he's harming the game by not being able to speak, speak English, that's wrong. He's not making the game any less interesting. If he did speak English, he would make the game even more interesting yeah, because yeah, what yeah. he's doing is so unique. But by not speaking, you're not hurting it in any way. Yeah, right? yeah I get what you're saying. But here's the thing. The dude doesn't have to want to fucking speak English. Like, That's maybe great. the guy doesn't want to be a superstar. Maybe he doesn't want to be the most marketed player in the league. Maybe he doesn't want to make any more fucking money. Maybe he has no personality. Maybe he's fucking boring. He doesn't have to do it. Would it help the league if he did? Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt if he doesn't. And that's the one thing where he got himself in trouble. I also think it's really funny that when he was imitating Sammy Sosa's voice, nobody thought that was racist at all. But if he was imitating Shohei Otani's voice. I didn't hear him, him imitate Sammy Sosa's yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because I actually saw this uh, episode in real time. Hmm. And it's interesting that I was even paying attention because I always zone out when they talk about baseball. Baseball, yeah. Who gives I a don't fuck, fuck with baseball. Yeah. I think baseball was way more interesting when everybody was on steroids. But when he said what he said, I didn't think anything of it. And that's why I wanted to have a conversation with um, people who were actually offended by what he said so I could get an understanding of why they might have been offended. Mm. Because to me, I've heard this rhetoric before in regards to boxers. They've been saying this about Canelo Alvarez and Triple G forever. Oh, yeah. Like if Canelo and Triple G could speak English, they'd be the biggest things in the sport. They I mean, would. Canelo in a lot of ways already is. But imagine if Canelo could like talk that talk. He can't. You know what I mean? And it hurts him. It hurts him. Um, I've heard, and I don't want to, I'm not going to say who I heard say this because I don't want to get my political, I mean, my sports pundits wrong. But I feel like I've heard sports pundits say, you know, if Luka Doncic was white or if Dirk Nowitzki was white. They are white. An American, no, uh, white uh, American. Uh, uh, American, yeah. They'd be the biggest stars in the league. They would, without a doubt. You know what I mean? 100%. So... And some, so so somebody brought a good point to us yesterday because we was talking about this on Breakfast Club. Luca will be the biggest star in the league, but you think so? He will, but he oh, would was be. Zion? Yeah, yeah. Really? He, he can speak. Not he can speak. Zion. Yeah, he can speak. English, he, he will be yeah, he over Zion. English. Not over. You think over Zion? Yeah, he's better. No, he's a better player. He's and better because shooter. Because he's better, I think his team will do better, and and I think he'll yeah, be a bigger yeah, star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and also the fact that he's white, dude. Like, there's a thing with humans. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but a lot of people they just want to see themselves reflected in their heroes. But do you have to be? Don't you have to be white American? Because Dirk was a beast. Yeah, and Dirk, Dirk, is, Dirk is probably the second greatest power forward of all time. I think Dirk's the thing about Dirk is nobody aspired to have a game like Dirk. Really? Yeah. Like everybody like, plays like Dirk now. Nah, nah seven so. footer who can spread the floor, but shoot the three, slow plotting. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Like yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay. Like when I'd be playing like, like hoops Duncan. on on you know on streets or whatever like that, and uh, you go to parks like I I wasn't even a shooter like I would I would cross you up and I would get to the cup yeah and people would call me Dirk because that was just the famous that was the most famous white yeah, basketball yeah, yeah. player and yeah. I would be insulted by that shit I'd be like Dirk. What, about what are you Kidd? talking about? Yeah, like I'm, I'm Iverson, you know, but they just couldn't. Iverson, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what are you talking about? White Iverson, bro. Before Post Malone, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so, um, oh, we got a point about Post Malone. Al brought up an interesting point. We get back to that, how you basically made his career um, by bullying his ass out of hip hop. That's not true. Yeah. The second he came on the Breakfast Club, he's like, I'm no longer a rap artist. And then he started. <laughs> and then remember, if I got to come to this show. I'm not rapping. No I more. am not rapping. <laughs> I got to care about Black Lives Matter and understand shit. I want to drink Bud Light, get face tattoos, fuck all this shit. Uh, and he went to the pop genre yep. and fucking exploded and became, you know, the biggest you artist. Owe him, you he owe owes him. you a little check, bro. Nah, whatever. He owes you a little check. Nah, he bought me joy just by being able to ask him, what, what are you doing for the Black Lives Matter? See, yeah, that is fucking I mean, nothing. I mean, not, you know what was so funny? That was, that was like, the Black Lives Matter movement was definitely the movement. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But then, like, shit got really intense. Mm -hmm. 
So you couldn't even ask that question no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? But man, when you used to ask white people that when it first started, they had no response. <laughs> <laughs> it's like PR people like, started saying. do? That's like, like I saw Jack Harlow say some shit a couple weeks ago. And I, oh, that, may, that might have been last week. I'm like, that's a very great What'd he say? statement. I don't even remember, but it was something about blackness and how him being a, a white person, he wants to show other white people how to represent the culture correctly and not appropriate it, but appreciate it and give back to it. And I was like, man, that's a great answer. Yeah. What? So many white people had to die on that what are you doing for Black Lives Matter question in order to get the Jack Harlow to have that great answer, man. We've seen a lot of people die on that question, bro. <laughs> like, but but Dirk, oh. so you consider Dirk white? Yeah, Dirk's white. They're all white. Okay. But yes, of course, if you're American, you're going to be huge. I mean, like we saw what happened with Lynn Sanity, right? Yeah. Like an Asian dude starts balling in the NBA. And the garden is sold out with Asians every single night. Like, Asians are going crazy. Oh, they knew Yao Ming back in the day. Yao Ming. I mean, oh. it was crazy because you want to see yourself reflected, especially if you're not reflected at all, right? Like, I'm sure as a black dude, you see tons of black basketball players, so it's not a big deal. You got your choice. But if you're a white dude and there's not a lot of white basketball players mm -hmm. that you actually want to aspire to play, like, Dirk didn't play that cool. Luca plays cool. Yeah, Luca's, Luca's he balls. His game is, mm -hmm. you know, is sweet. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a lot of that going on now me personally i never uh, understood that or felt that way but but i also just had so many people i looked up to from different races growing up so it was just kind of like like the musicians and shit that i look up, up to like i listened to hip-hop so i didn't see myself reflected in that mm -hmm. i look and and obviously and comedians basketball. comedians funny is just funny so you're looking for the funny comedians i started watching comedy from deaf comedy jam yeah, like yeah. I, that's what i so it's like i was just used to that so i never thought about it but i do understand how people want to be reflected True, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, I think I think everything you said is true. I, I think with the with the baseball thing, and you know, I, I thought about this by actually watching that segment. I didn't realize baseball was so old. Yeah, right. So baseball is what a hundred plus years old, if not mm. more. Oh man, I right? thought it's older, bro. It's probably, I think it's older. It's, it's 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 very very old. Yeah, and like most institutions that are old in America, they're inherently racist, right? Yeah. I don't subscribe to that. I mean, just go back to Jackie Robinson. <laughs> I mean, oh, they, they were as racist. To say the institution is racist still is, is I can't prove that or well, deny Well, Stephen, they had a good point. Stephen, they said the demo's not getting no younger, right? Stephen, they said it's still an old demo. Yeah, so let, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not, it's, once again, it's not a general statement. Right, right. But if it is an old sport and you got a lot of old people that watch the sport, you probably got some 70-year-old, 80-year-old White people, that's oh, like, nice. yeah. I don't want to see these Asians and these La Do Dominicans and Latinos dominating baseball. If you want to make America great again, how do you think you felt about baseball? Yeah. <laughs> it's the <laughs> great American pastime. I want to make the great American pastime again. So they're like, to your point, where is the Babe Ruth? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where is the Satchel Pages? No, he was black. Shoeless Joe Jackson. He was he black? The guy from nah, life. Nah, he was white. Where's the Nolan Ryans? Yeah, Where is uh, yeah. the Mark McGuire's? Yeah. I remember the good old days of baseball. Yeah. Like, I'm serious. They probably do feel Sammy like that. Sosa. So it's probably, it's probably an American thing. More so than anything. They want to see themselves represented. So yeah. when you look at the numbers declining, because baseball ratings are declining a little it's bit. It's just boring. The sport's boring. I, I always thought it was boring. Though. More interesting play sports it. are coming around to replace it. And this is what happens with sports throughout time. Like we yeah. used to watch people running around circle and thought that was interesting, right? Like, like the track Hold and field on. was fire. Now we can tolerate it once every four years. That's how boring it is, right? So not love track and field. Yeah, yeah if you like it once every four years. If motherfuckers said every Sunday we're gonna watch track and field, you can be like, all right, yeah. I get it. I want to see, yeah. I nah, see I the next person. Yeah, like, man, fuck it's out of here. It's cap, cap, no, cap, it's cap. cap. It's competitive. If I go, I watch you and Taylor. I watch you and T Diddy race every week. Exactly. If you and Taylor race every week, I watch that shit every week. Same result. Same result. But what if she keeps saying she get better, she getting faster, she doing it? I want to see that. Eventually, be like, ah, right, you're not gonna win. The reason track and field is boring is because the same people win every single time. By the way, There's no competition. By the way, if you if you can't watch track and field, you just got ADD or something, bro. It's one out of every four years you and can watch. And not only that, it. it's like ten seconds. Yeah, but nobody's <laughs> watching it unless your country's attached. So you could tell us if a sport is trash Respect. if you need the country to be attached. Now, I like watching you saying. I loved watching you saying in regular tournaments or when it was like whatever he would run. Yeah, he's like, like that Jamaica. dude was incredible. Yeah. I like I, I, I like speed. You know what I'm saying? Especially, I mean, but I'm different. Though. I used to run a three six forty, so it's like I I respect like other speeds. You know huh? what I mean? 
100 meters, I, I, used, to, I used to do the what? 400 meter. I used to do the 400 meter in like, man, six, seven seconds, some shit like that. No, it wasn't seven seconds. Yo, it was son. like, yo, no, shut the fuck like, up, bro. It was like 32 <laughs> seconds. Yo, the <laughs> amount of lies that just came out of his mouth right now. He goes, <laughs> he said, can, can you just repeat? A what 40 he yard dash and what? He goes, <laughs> He said, Charlie, man. Charlie, he goes, look at his face. Look at his face. He goes, he goes, he goes. He goes, he goes. I think he's bad with numbers. So he's like, bad. Yo, he goes, you I never back three, up the weed. And then he goes, he goes, 100 meter dash? Shit. I used to run a 400 meters. He just kept moving up. And, what the fuck are you talking 400 about? 400 meter, 37 seconds. 37.2. Charlemagne. You lucky. Charlemagne. You lucky I grew up in an era where we didn't have cameras. <laughs> Thank God. No, you lucky. <laughs> I had a 72 inch vertical leap, too. Hell no. right. Who? Man. Who? Who? <laughs> Man, I, I, I was training, and this guy talking about though he could jump over the fence. Leg got caught. No. Hung on the fence. No. I, had to go, I had to go get him. No. <laughs> Oh no, dude! <laughs> I, could, I could jump that. I'm like, I man, really don't know. Nah. That was stupid. Yo, you're crazy. You remember, how, crazy. remember how we talked he about? Listen, remember how earlier we talked about? All it takes is one person <laughs> to make you do something. Yeah, yeah. I'm that yeah. person for me. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Wax was going to train, right? Wax on the football field. Yeah. I just see the fence. Something said, "Jump over that fence." Oh, it was him. Yes. Me, oh, my mom. Yeah. I thought it was your friend. No, no, no. 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 I'm talking to myself. He took, I could jump, I was like, man, I, I can jump over it. that shit. Right, for no reason. He just do his I thing. Take off. <laughs> I'm watching, I'm okay. We see the and fuck he got. I had no. <laughs> 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 just like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I couldn't even finish practice. It's time to go. Give me some weed. <laughs> Shit was stupid, man. <laughs> the fuck he but delayed, got caught in dumb shit. The moral of the story is what Stephen A. Smith said. It wasn't any type of phobic, was it? <laughs> That's what you gotta ask now. I don't even know what phobic thing. I don't even know what phobic it is anymore. You know what I want to see? I want somebody to ask Khaled. I want somebody to ask DJ Khaled. Uh -huh. What does he think of they? Oh, right we now the best. in this era. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We the best. They, they. What is it? Because remember, he always used to be like, they don't want us to win, and and they is haters. Yo, Who's they. Yo, can you imagine if somebody said that to Khaled now, and then you took it and put it online Yo. out of context? <laughs> They'd be calling Khaled so many phobics, bro. Khaled, Khaled was trying to make America great again, bro. It's yo, that. his day was hating on him, right? Like, yo, they didn't want him to win. Yo, it's true. I just want to see how, those are the type of social experiments I like to see. Yeah. Because we can really see how America has jumped the shark. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody went back to one of Khaled's old interviews mm -hmm. and bought it up and say, look how he's talking about they. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you feel about pronouns? They don't want us to win. <laughs> I think what Demi Lovato said is true, and what I respect said? her for mm -hmm. it. Demi Lovato said, don't be mad at people who 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 don't use the right pronouns because it takes some... Get she basically said it takes some getting used to. Yeah. It's like, going to take it. It's going to take one more day than I will live. <laughs> yeah, because it's going to take a generation. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Because yeah. if, you're if you're telling me now that that's, that's one of the genders... I'm a 43 year old man who grew up on male and female. Yeah, A E I O U. They, I thought they was a. Oh what, they, what is they? They is a pronoun. They is a vowel. No, they is a noun. <laughs> <laughs> they is a pronoun. Sorry, sorry. A E I O U. Those vowels. What? Those See, are vowels. I don't know the the parentheses. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, act. Oh yeah. Um. Salute to act. I, I, didn't, I didn't get to watch the interview because it was five hours long. That's longer than Endgame, bro. Y'all don't so know. That shit was But long, I, I, I saw clips bro. of it. Um, and it made, you know, it, I, first of all, you got to salute academics. He's I, great, bro. Bro. I told, he is excellent. I told somebody this today, actually, because I was talking about, I, I was listening to somebody say how, you know, they want to work from home, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, yo, you can't get to a certain level if you stay in the house, mm. right? Um, act coming outside was one of the best things, right? That happened to him when he started doing Complex, and yeah. you know, um, you, I saw him at the, the verses with Soldier Boy and everything else. And now, you know, I, I don't know if he announced it yet, but he got his thing. His, don't say where it is. Okay, but he, got he said a, he got a podcast coming. Yes, yeah. right. 
And it's just like, yo, he came outside, right? So I, 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 I salute Ak for everything he built prior to that. Amazing. But he's taking it to another level because he's starting it. Like seeing him do interviews and shit, that's, I like that. You know it's what great. I mean? I mean, he's been on yeah. Brilliant Idiots before, but just, see, just seeing him sit with Flagrant, I'm like, okay, I like that. I saw somebody say something. I actually think it was Ak who said this. And then I saw people saying this online. I think he he was, him, didn't him, did him and Weezy have a back and forth or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Ak was saying how um, they nobody they he was look nobody listens to their podcast or whatever. But he was comparing it to YouTube number. Mm. I just want everybody out there to please, man, please. This is just a, a, a I don't know what kind of tip you call it, business tip or whatever. There is a difference between podcasting and YouTubing. Even if it is a podcast that's on YouTube, that's two different. Revenue streams, that's two different audiences. We've had this discussion before. Do I think YouTube videos help the podcast? Yes. But sometimes it does not translate. Sometimes people can have massive audio numbers like Horrible Decisions does. Massive, massive audio numbers. But the YouTube might not be popping. Popping. You know what yep. I mean? And that's 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 fine. And sometimes people can have massive. YouTube, YouTube and no and audio audience. app. That's a hundred percent. Sometimes true. they can have both. There's, there's many. Sometimes different you things. can have both. Yes. You know what I mean? I don't know what causes somebody to have both. Brilliant idiots is like that. We don't do crazy on YouTube. We have, I think, we have really strong YouTube, decent. But, but the audio numbers are audio numbers are are big. I literally saw that on Reddit this week, and it, it, it they literally on Reddit this week. They literally, oh, bless their little hearts, us, because <laughs> they was like. Man, shouldn't Brilliant Idiots podcast be bigger? Right. Like, do you know what we do in audio numbers every week? Right. Like, go, go to we have a SoundCloud. Go to Brilliant Idiots SoundCloud. Right. Can, can I read? Can I just read? Yo, day, bro. I do whatever read, you I need. I just want. I just want to read some of the Flex, numbers, bro. No, 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 no. Taylor told me it's impossible to run a 40 meter in seven seconds as if she, I'm going to listen to you about racing anything. <laughs> she just texts me rematch. Oh, please. Yo, Taylor. we need Taylor back, bro. <laughs> Taylor is... We doing, need Taylor this back. Is, Taylor is producing. This is what producers do. They we need her to thing. produce her ass in the room okay. so that we can talk that shit. I'm going to read some of these numbers. I don't even know when these dates are, but brilliant. Idiot. This is We Come in Trees. I don't remember what episode that was. 308,000. This is just SoundCloud. Boy. This is just SoundCloud. This isn't Boy. Apple. This isn't uh, Spotify or whatever else. This is just SoundCloud. We Come in Trees, 308,000. 12 Pump Shorty with Lil Duval, 307,000. Call Him Daddy, 305,000. The last podcast we put out last week, one day, or two weeks ago, One Day Too Late, 272,000. Before that, Brilliant Idiots the Musical, 296,000. Ready, Set, Go, 274,000. All I'm simply saying is, we are, uh, thank God, because of y'all, the listeners, we are a very huge podcast audio wise half a million so, uh, views slash listens is is big man and that's like i said that's just on soundcloud that's I'm not combining youtube and soundcloud oh yeah yeah and that, soundcloud yeah and but when you take the apple and spotify and everything else right we're doing like seven hundred thousand eight hundred thousand listens a week thank wow. god and we've been doing this for some years right we've been right. doing the podcast for how long she had a long time. That's what I'm saying. So, like, listen, I, 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 we appreciate your concern. <laughs> but thank you. We're doing very good. But I just want everybody out there that's in this space, podcast, YouTube, it's a difference. You know what I'm saying? It's podcasting, which is audio, and then it's YouTubing, which is video. It's, just, it's, it's different. So I wasn't even, when I saw Axe say that, I was just like, yeah, I want to just explain that to people a little mm. bit. Because Horrible Decisions is a huge podcast like massive mm. they do like a half a million listens per episode wow yes. that's amazing easily yeah. actually probably more but i'm just on an average they probably do like a little over a half a million per episode that's wow huge yeah wow. that's huge so salute the horrible decisions and salute to my guy jamal nolan at jam 44 l uh on instagram he made a video he told the story of the Breakfast Club dolls. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, set yeah. that over. That was fire. Yeah, he told the story of the Breakfast Club dolls. Yeah. So I think uh, my man Nick put that on Breakfast Club page. So yeah. Um, what else we got, man? Yeah, shout out to Shaq on Earn Your Leisure too, man. You can listen to the Earn Your Leisure podcast on Black Effect iHeart Radio Podcast Network. That shit fucked me up last week when I heard that story. What? Man, Shaq, Shaq owns the likenesses of Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley. Uh, 
he owns like some of JC Penny. And it's because he did some deal with this company. I forgot the name of the company, but he gave he he sold half of his likeness to the company, but also part of the deal is that he got like half ownership in the company or some type of big he bought big into equity the company. Stake. Well, the company wanted to buy half of his likeness as part of that deal. He didn't just take like a check. He's like, yo, give me equity in the company as well. So he got oh. equity in the company. So now being he got equity in the company, he owns the likenesses to Marilyn Monroe, Elvis. I think they even got Muhammad Ali. Damn. Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. Like, please listen to that episode of uh, earn your leader with Shaquille O'Neal. It is very inspiring. Yeah, he's made some good business moves. Oh, man, man, that's an understatement. Man. All right, let's do some asking idiots, man, and get up out of here. Who we got? Who we got? Uh, Celebrity Veneration Nation says, does Wax ever get comments about his laugh? Charlotte and Andrew never flinch, but I'm dying laughing each time. Greatest laugh of all time. He's got a great laugh. Do you get comments about your laugh, Wax? Just what she just said, or he. What do you mean? They, it Wax. Are they. Don't disrespect people. It's A-E-I-O-U. They, you know, you know, if you don't know. A-E-I-O-U. Sometimes why? Mm, I heard that. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I just, it's a laugh. I don't even hear myself sometimes. It's a, it's, it's a very disarming laugh because it don't look like it's coming from him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 it's probably yeah. what it is. It's cute. It's yeah, about. It's a cute. No, it's a cute laugh. Nah. No, no, it is. It is. Not it's cute. cute. It's not it is. It's a cute laugh. Yo, you not cute. You're a cute, you got a cute laugh, bro. You're a cute laugh, bro. Not cute. You got a cute laugh. You don't, don't even smile laugh. when I laugh. I don't even smile. That's what makes it so cute. It's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sweet smiles too. And then he shrugs up. You know what I'm saying? It's all warm. You're a cute laugh, bro. You're a cute laugh, bro. You do. All right. Air tag Oscar asks: Big expensive wedding, fully paid, but a small honeymoon or small wedding. With an expensive, fully small, paid honeymoon. What you doing, show? I'm having a. Well, what number is small for you guys? What number would you consider a small wedding? What you mean, as in price mm-hmm. or size? Size of people. Hundred people. Know. I don't remember how many was that mine. I don't remember. I guess I think it's like fifty is cool. I'm trying to keep around a hundred. Okay, that's I think big. That's perfect. Like that's I, big. I want to like know everybody intimately there. You think that's, that's huge? But a lot of people don't. Huge. See, yeah, but a lot of people don't see that as a big wedding, though. No, intimate people. is. The, oh, having it be intimate. Yeah, uh, that's uh ten people. I don't think I had a big the wedding. parents. No, but it wasn't small. It just seemed. It, wasn't small. it seemed like everybody at yours really knew each other. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. But it wasn't like eighty small. people. At least. I, don't, I, really I think don't it was know. around that number. At least eighty. But uh, yeah, for me, uh, that's cool right there. I don't know. I think, I think if you do the wedding right, like I put it this way, if it's like a a cultural thing like the wedding like I went to this Akash's wedding like an Indian right, wedding listen, those are so bro, fucking listen, lit bro. bro but that was so much fun but um, like there's certain weddings where and I don't think that was that one but there's certain weddings where it's like you're doing it for your your parents really mm-hmm. like and that yeah, I'm like is. if it's for them if it's not for me let's do that small and I'll save the money and do the honeymoon with my wife where it's yeah, gonna be our time to celebrate yes. but if it's the wedding that you want it to be like Akash and his girl had the wedding that they wanted to have. Like I want to have the wedding. I'm down to have a a nice wedding, and then the wedding is for y'all, man. Yeah, yeah it's I really, think it it's really, be. It's, yeah, it's really for the woman. But I mean, I don't. It's really for y'all. It's for y'all together. Yeah. So whatever makes y'all comfortable, whatever y'all want to do, do, saving money is what's comfortable. Listen, how did Akash convince y'all to to, to like put on the the, the garb? That was oh, amazing. Did. We but, wanted that. But shit. what was the yeah. conversation? Convinced. Nothing. Because I'm sure some people shit. would. I'm sure y'all got <laughs> some like, oh, this is cultural appropriation. No, bro. The Indians know? are the best, bro. Like, cause aliens are the best. Aliens, yeah. No, Indians. <laughs> Indians are the best because. Because they <laughs> want you to embrace their culture. Mm. I'm with it. I agree. I mean, I, I, I clearly know that I'm just common sense showed me. Are you talking me. about the pod? Or are you talking about the wedding? I'm talking about the thing the in the head. Common sense the told the me that they, the turban, the this, pug, this was the thing, right? They, they told y'all to wear this attire. The thing about yeah. Indian weddings is they go, yo, you can dress in traditional Western clothes or you can wear the Eastern stuff. You can wear the Indian stuff. And either one is great and we're cool with both. We dressed up. Uh, Indian wedding is like a fucking week long. Theirs was like Three days or three, something, or three yeah. events. So, like, the Friday shit, we all wore suits. They all wore the traditional Indian stuff. Saturday, they all wore suits. We fucked up and wore our <laughs> traditional Indian shit. So, it looked like we making fun of them. We wow. showed up. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, in a tuxedo. Yeah. We got the fucking pugs on. Yeah. We got the whole Fuck. drope, you know, but they loved it. They fucking yeah, love it. Yeah. You get, if you embrace their culture, they think it's so Respect. cool. They, they, they don't see it 
as you mocking them or anything. They're like, we're lit. So no, if I you're doing it. our shit, then it's good. So what thought, about the people with the yarmulke? If you do a, if you go to a celebration in the temple, you have to cover your head. Because really? it's, it's paying respect to God. You're covering okay. your head in front of God. Oh, so, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. So it's like when I would go to like bar mitzvahs or bat mitzvahs I as a kid, knew. like my Jewish friends, you, everybody would put it on when you went in there. 100%. Weezy looked very wholesome too. She looked very wholesome in Indian God. Yeah, she was, I was like, she about to trick the fuck out of an Indian. Totally trick. <laughs> 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 totally true. Well, virgin talking Exactly. And, then going, and she said that on Instagram, too. She was like, I look... I don't know. She said, I look like a virgin. She said, I look like something. But I was just like, yeah, she really going to trick somebody. Yeah, I don't know. I love Weezy, man. Salute to Weezy. Uh, Juan of the Real says, how did the person who invented the clock knew what time it was at that exact time? That's so fucking smart. That's a good question. That's that the smartest great. question I ever fucking heard. That's a good question. I would say that the person who invented the clock is the person who invented the concept of time. <sighs> I and, and I'm, I'm only spitballing God. here. I don't know. We know that the sun goes up. We know the sun goes down. We know that for a certain period of the day, the sun is out. And for a certain period of the day, the sun is down. Mm. But we don't have to have a schedule, right? Do you yeah. have to have a schedule back then? I, but I guess you could know when it was like noon by the yeah. way the sun you, you was. You're more sensitive like to things when you ain't have phones and microwaves. Here's something weird. Why is the way that we calculate time the same throughout the world? For example, like our letters are different for the way that we write words, right? Mm -hmm. Alphabets and shit are different. But nobody around the world has a clock where it's like every hour is really three hours. Yeah, or was an yeah, apple yeah. instead of three, and a banana instead of two. <laughs> Wait, they, they, That's what you mean? They, they, no, nah, they do have different ways of writing numbers. What I'm saying <laughs> is, like, one hour to us is 60 minutes, okay. but somebody else could have a different unit of measurement for an hour. Yeah, I say, an hour be, is an hour everywhere. It could yeah, be yeah, three yeah. hours. Oh. Yeah. Like, everybody seems to go off of that yeah. scale. No, nah, like that's a, true. You know, like a day, they're going off the idea of an hour and a minute. But why isn't there some place that goes, now nah, we don't have hours, we don't have minutes, we have days. Whatever, like another completely another. Uh, time is time. time. Like I, time is time. I ran a 3640 in the UK, Shut I ran a 3640 in up. Africa, I ran a 3640 in the US. Yeah, 36 kilometers. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> kilometers? Who the fuck is, is this kilometers? Marvel villain that you just named? <laughs> like, <laughs> is Juicy J? Is that kilometers? Is freaking DJ I, I Paul or Marvel so. villain now? Three six kilometer kilometers. What the hell? <laughs> All right, um, we got Mo. Let's okay, do two more and get up out of here. Duverson Clifton says, "Why all superheroes <laughs> has daddy issues?" Easy answer. Go. Because why the fuck would I respect my daddy when I'm the superhero? Ooh. <laughs> you know Your daddy ain't tough saying? enough. Throw some balls, dad. Exactly. <laughs> you ain't... Oh, shit. I can't even think of superheroes that got daddies. They got superheroes to, Superheroes don't got daddies. You don't hear about the... I know Clark Kent, but he was a stepchild. Where you get the nut from? The what? It's a baby. Like Oh, the dad nutted, but then dipped. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. But also, superhero. a lot of superheroes aren't born superheroes, though, right? Like, they get their powers through, like... Other I, I wonder if they want the people, if they're like targeting a group of people specifically, like who feel like their parents are maybe absentee or their father is absentee. They feel like a little nerdy and yeah. a little alone. And it's like, oh, man, if I can live vicariously through that superhero whose life is similar to mine, yeah. then it works. I would like to know specifics. I'd like to know what superhero you're talking about. I, not to cut you, but I think like the superhero shit kind of got popping after the war, right? What war? Like uh, World War Two. Yeah. Right. So I think there's probably like a lot of fathers who went to that war who came back. One who came back and weren't there, or two came back with like some, some serious One arm PTSD. Missing, nah, but not even like, oh, you can't throw play, play catch. Is that what you're saying? No, oh. you're saying like Wolverine got the thing in his arm. You think he probably had a castle in his arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they there was like some sort of like um, I think there was you could relate in that way, but also like some sort of like emotional trauma that the kid was going through, didn't really understand what their parent was. Also, like alcoholism was crazy after the war. Like nobody yeah. even addressed it. So now you got all these kids that are like, oh, fuck, I need somebody else to teach me how to be a man or teach me how to be brave or teach me to do something. And then maybe these, these, you know. I don't even know if it's just that. daddy issues. I can't even think of too many superheroes who fuck with mama like that, bro. Son, a lot I of can't. this shit is, but that's the, he's a stepchild. Oh, yeah. So Spider Man was living with his fucking grandma and grand yeah. and uncle or some shit like that. Aunt, uncle and aunt. Did they kill yeah. their parents? 
I don't um, know. Batman's parents died. Early. Batman's, Batman's parents, parents died. died. Yeah. yeah. So maybe comic books were about absentee parents. <laughs> That's what gave you the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Or the desire to probably like want to be a superhero. You got know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, That's probably why I know it was Marvel. Who the superheroes with daddies and mommies, man? That's a good question. Let us know. I don't know who the superheroes are with daddies and mommies. I can't think of any. And if I and, and the ones that do, it's not like their parents play a significant role, role in the universe. In yeah. The, yeah. I don't know. All right, let's go. Let's do last another one. one. Last, let's the only do the one last I can one. think about is Iron Man. Iron Man got Iron a Man dad. dad. Yeah, yeah, that's but right. But they got killed too. But I mean, he had daddy issues. Like he, his dad never really like, loved him because he was too busy with his work. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. Sucks. Howard Starks. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, Let me see. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I like that one. Which one? Go. But I don't want to do it. All right, go down. Um. Ooh. Uh, that's a good one. What's that? What did Akash's? I guess we kind of talked about that, but what did Akash's parents think about Andrew's turban? That's from Des Ramey. They had it. Uh, they had a rap for me. That's wow. We got a rap at the wedding. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, funny child. Okay, how you feeling about the NBA Finals thus far? How about that one from Alex underscore Drummond? We can finish on that. Don't care. Really? I couldn't I care it, less man. about really? this NBA Finals. They're doing everything in their power to get me to care. I do not give a fuck. I haven't watched a minute of a single game. Why? Me neither, man. Fuck. I don't care, bro. Like, what it matter? Like, does it matter? I yeah. love it. Really? I do. I, I mean, I see it. I, I don't I think that this is a great thing for the NBA simply because you have a mix of everything that you would need to have a great league. Mm. You have a veteran in Chris Paul who's never been there. Yeah, you know what I mean? Way who you, you kind of want to see a ring just because when you see a guy doing something for that long, you yes. want to see him achieve the ultimate That's prize. That's the only reason why I watch it. Um, mm -hmm. But then you have somebody like Devin Booker, who's definitely one of the most you know future young, exciting players in the league. I actually said that if Devin Booker balls out this series and he's a guy that averages like 30 in an exciting fashion and they win, he probably end up being the biggest star in the league. He's so marketable. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He's so marketable. He speaks English. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just a lot of different things that, Go into his favor. Girls like him. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Giannis. Yeah. You know, another two-time MVP who's like a, a star, a superstar in the league. Like, I like it. Then, it's, then I like the fact that it's Milwaukee and Phoenix. And the ratings are higher. Do you know that Steph Curry and LeBron James never had good ratings in NBA Finals? I don't know. They that. did a whole thing about this on first take. Like, the ratings are up like 16% or something crazy I don't like believe that. that. I promise you. Google it. More Americans watch the Euro Cup than they watch the NBA Finals. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, I'm not saying that they don't, yeah, but soccer, look it up. Yeah. NBA, fi NBA Finals ratings hmm. are up. They, they they did this whole thing that showed the ratings LeBron and Steph Curry were in, and they was like, yo, they never did good in ratings. I don't know why. Oh, well, not now. Now go. What is it? Go back. I just saw. The, I just saw the article. Okay, see, that's two different articles. New York Post says NBA Finals ratings way down from pre-pandemic numbers, but then AP News says NBA Finals ratings up. From 2020 pandemic down from 2019, Suns Bucks NBA Finals averaging 9 million viewers through game three. But then it's NBA Finals ratings up from 2020 down from 2019. 2020 was the Lakers. Mm. I was Braun in the Miami Heat. But I don't know what it is. I'm thinking that it's because Milwaukee, like all of Wisconsin is tuning in. You don't like no, I love Milwaukee. That's one of my favorite cities. I like Milwaukee. It's I mean, Milwaukee is cool. Food is good. But uh, I don't haunted, think anybody's man. watching this shit, bro. Uh, Milwaukee. I don't know. I don't know if nine million is good or not. To be honest with you, not nah. for not for regular television. I don't yeah. think so, bro. No. But 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 it said viewership for Game Three, the NBA Finals on ABC was up fifty one percent from last year. That's what I'm saying. That was Braun and the Lakers against the Miami Heat in the bubble when everybody was home. <laughs> well, the bubble was trash. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I yeah, the bubble was trash, bro. But what else we COVID had to do? Fucked up. Nah, COVID I fucked up. Know. Have babies. Get no. engaged. Yeah. Buy a dog. I like <laughs> Me it. too. I, got, I did all that. You did the same thing? Yeah, I don't know. That was man. a thing to do. I like well, watching the Bucks and Suns. It's fun, man. And we'll see who wins. I don't know who's going to win the series. I have no fucking idea. I really don't. I'd love to see Chris Middleton win a ring because he's from the 843. But I'd love seeing Chris Paul win a ring too. He's from North Chris Carolina. Paul. And I just... You know, I just think that he's been in the league a long time and he's he's, he's represented well. I don't know. It's whatever. I don't have a dog in this fight. Mm. That it, guys? Did we do it? I, I think we did it, bro. All right. I think we did it, too. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Mm.